This is f crazy. It's okay. unreal. Right. You're gonna moderate it's this. It's unreal. Well, I'm just saying, okay. he's getting steam. He's getting gish galloped over here. What's the negative outcome that comes from him, like bringing up this Ayurveda thing and, and saying, hey, maybe you should meditate? Okay. Because, you know, well, no, oh, wait, no, no. You're f you're f you don't know what you're talking about, okay? This is why I don't want you to f go on and on because you've got no clue what you're talking about. I've actually watched sure. the stuff yes. that I'm talking about. I think that's I... a really uncharitable read of that. Oh, yeah, but I think also, like, aren't you project? Like, it could be projecting, though. Like, it could be projecting that you're assuming, though, that, like, he's trying to imply that, like, it, it makes him better or something. Sure. sure. I, yeah. why, would you, why would you bring that up if it doesn't make you better? Um, yeah, I'd actually, I actually agree with uh, Chad much more about that now. Uh, Mr. Girl, okay. we'll replace you after this, okay? Just go ahead and finish this topic. Replace me. Feels wrong. I feel like I wouldn't. Me and Chad are, we're, we're like, we're like conjoined twins here. You gotta have us. Both. I'm really not trying to toot my own horn, but there are people that are in my practice that have been on treatment for, like, have been in therapy and medication for anxiety for, like, 15 years. And within six months, we're taping them off of medication, and they feel fantastic. Why? Is it because I'm a brilliant clinician? No! This is what I'm saying. I'm not actually any better. Using it in these cases, absolutely. And it has all of the shortcomings of that. But it does appear that your Ayurvedic dosha actually correlates with genetics and other kinds of things, which were, you know, I can go into more detail. But, you know, even, for example, like some of my uh, Ayurvedic colleagues in India have been able to predict complications of COVID based on the dosha of, of the patient. So COVID is one thing, right? But whether this person uh, needs ICU stuff or they have cognitive stuff or they have GI symptoms from COVID appears to correlate with their Ayurvedic dosha, which is incredibly fascinating, right? So uh, unfortunately, studies haven't really been published on this yet. We'll see if they ever kind of get published. Um, but it, it does appear that like, you know, physicians are able to sort of predict, okay, does this person need to watch out for stroke? Does this person need to watch out for GI complications, cognitive complications, or respiratory compl complications? Because COVID can cause all kinds of random crap in random people. But if you really think about it, you know, I know it sounds kind of weird, but there's absolutely biology and science that leads to a complication of COVID. It's not random. It's not true. So I mean, with this one, I just, I kind of hope it speaks for itself, really. Um, I'm not really sure, like, you know, he, he claims that a, a, um, Ayurvedic practitioner is able to predict COVID outcomes. And then, and then says, I'm paraphrasing, but then he says something on the lines of like, hopefully some studies come out to demonstrate this. I mean... <laughs> He's making a specific medical claim in regards to COVID based on Ayurvedic dosha, and he's admitting that he's got literally nothing to back it up. Back this claim up. Moving on. Let's have a look at this. So this is a video from Dr. K on the placebo effect. Let's just watch this first of all. Okay. And the fact that these three things are connected, mm -hmm. that what I think affects my brain, which in turn affects the function of my immune system. Yep. And this is a really key point, because when we talk about healing or improvement, the other cool thing, which I think you've stumbled upon, is that if you want to make a biological change in your body, your mind is capable of doing that. Yep. And the, the really important thing to understand here is I want everyone to really think about this because it blows my fucking mind. <laughs> you guys know in cancer, in, in clinical trials on cancer, what they do is they take some, they take two people with cancer, they take like 100 people with cancer, and they gave 50 of them chemotherapy, which is drugs that travel in your body to cancer and kill cancer cells. They give other 50 people, not this isn't precisely true, but they give other people placebo. So placebo is not a real thing, it's like a sugar pill. And the interesting thing is that in these clinical trials, People who get, so what, what they, when they determine the efficacy of the drug, well, the way they determine it is how much did it outperform placebo? That's the standard. It's not how much did it work, it's how much did it outperform placebo? Which means that if you look at a clinical trial in cancer, mm -hmm. what's actually happening is there are people who are getting better, their cancer is shrinking on like MRIs, but they're not taking real medicine. <laughs> okay. So that is staggering. Yeah. Right. So this means that like placebo and there, there's a really fascinating Ted Chuck who has done a lot of placebo research 
And the crazy thing that he's discovered is you can even give a placebo to someone and you can tell them, I am giving you a placebo. This is not real medicine. But I have this huge pile of evidence which shows that even if you take a placebo, you will still get better. And do you know what happens when he gives those people placebo? And then he tells them, I believe that even though this is a sugar pill, I think that your rheumatoid arthritis is going to get better. Pewee, do you know what happens to those people when he gives them a sugar pill? It gets better. It does get better, even if they know it's a placebo. Yeah. I'm not like, surprised. That blows my fucking mind. <laughs> Right. So what, now I'm getting off on a tangent because like, what is placebo? Placebo is just all of the mechanisms of the human body and mind that we yep. do not scientifically understand. Exactly. But placebo actually gets people better mm -hmm. in cancer clinical trials, in rheumatoid arthritis clinical trials, depression clinical trials. But that's like waffly because depression is in the mind and it's not really real anyway. But you can look at physical illnesses like diabetes and stuff and you can give people placebo and they actually get better. Yeah. It's mind blowing. It, it is. So what this means is that in the same way that we can have an emotional attack that's going to affect your neurochemistry, affect your energy level, we can also do things on an emotional level that will bolster your physical self, your energetic self, your intellectual self. And we can also do emotional processing, which is what a lot of therapy is about, but we can also do something called jnana yoga which is contemplation. So that's a little bit different from actually just processing someone's emotions. Both of them sort of happen in therapy, but in therapy, we don't really separate out the intellectual mind from the emotional mind. Mm -hmm. But the, the yogis tell us that contemplation and reflection, which is I think anyway, most of what you've been doing. We've got, I think we've the got way to the main point of what I wanted to get to there. So let's talk a bit about that, okay? So the first thing I want to address um, is this here. And um, obviously, you know, the question arises, doesn't it seem a bit weird that they would use like placebo in in clinical cancer trials? Because if you're giving someone a placebo, like there's no evidence that that's going to like um, deal with the cancer. The use of placebos in cl cancer clinical trials is rare. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know um, where he's getting that from or what he's read, but... It seems to be uh, that the use of placebos in cancer clinical trials is rare, first of all. Um, further to that, uh, placebos. So with placebos, what the placebo effect of, has been shown to work on symptoms modulated by the brain. Okay. So one example of this is pain. If you take a placebo, it can have an impact on your perception of pain based on our current understanding of like a placebo, okay? This idea that the placebo effect is somehow going to magically shrink your cancer is insane. And it is not at all backed up by the medical science and investigation that currently exists around placebo. So the statements being made are way in excess of what is currently proven or researched in regards to the placebo effect. So why is he overstating it so massively? Well, here I am on my day off <laughs> at uh, 1 a.m. going on to a panel. Look, I'm going to be real with you, okay? I don't mean to be rude to anyone. But the only, the only channel... The, the only reason I'm going on this panel is because I'm told that Destiny might be there and Mr. Girl will be there. Um, you know, it's one in the morning for me. I was going to say no, but then when he said that they'd be on there, I was like, okay, well, I'll probably turn up then because, you know, like, I'll I'll not, you know, I'll, I'll go against my day off um, because it sounds like a good panel, you know? So if they're not there, I'll be a bit annoyed. <laughs> I'll be a bit annoyed. Wait, Destiny told Fnatic no, but Fnatic made the tweet anyway. What? Are you kidding me? He said to me, tentative, Destiny tentative. Well, at least not League. Destiny hasn't fully committed. It seems like he might be able to do this panel on Dr. K, Reckful and Mr. Girl. Are you going to get a panel? Yeah, I guess I am. I guess I got bullied to it, so. Um, we're just waiting on Destiny, I believe, and Anivoir. She said she'd be about 10 minutes late. Um... Yep. 
Are we ten minutes late already, aren't we? Jesus. Yeah, we are. Listen, they it's call it color people learn. time, but you know what I mean? Sometimes <laughs> your people do Wait. it too. Hmm? Hang on, am I engaging in white supremacy right now by insisting on a, a correct start time? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, I've heard that from some leftists, but, you know, we just dismiss okay. those kind of people, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, it seems a bit silly to me. I think we can all we can all get to stuff on time regardless of the colour of our skin, right? Absolutely. That's my thoughts anyway. 100%. 100%. Man, we've only had, I think, really one interaction before, Chud. Um, thank you for joining this panel on such a short notice. No, 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 it's all good. Um, ha happy to be here. Um, it should be an interesting conversation. I don't know. It's interesting to hear what other people's takes about it are because I've spoken a lot about it, you know? Yeah, so actually uh, a buddy of mine told me that you had like some really strong takes on it. Uh, and so I thought, yeah, let me, let me go ahead and reach on out. Um, it's crazy because I think your take is, I think, the most common take. So... Uh, we're not going to get a lot of, um, I don't think there'll be a lot of pushback, but fortunately that's good. I, so the, per well, we'll get into that, but the purpose of this kind of panel is not about like, oh, I want some spicy argument or some crazy takes or anything like that. It really is about like just having a conversation and like making voices being heard um, and just discussing things with it. If everybody's on the same page, it doesn't matter. You know, it's just about, you know, kind of hitting on, on key points and, and getting through a conversation. Um, yeah, for sure. Avoiding the uh, the blood sports type mentality. Absolutely. Basically. Though you know I can do me some blood sports, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you. Obviously, I'm friends of Supreme, but the wicked supremacist thing yeah. is hilarious. Okay? Yeah, that's his name, though. <laughs> You're friends with who? Wicked supremacist? That's cool. He's a, you know, he's he's a character. Can I just ask why why do you call him wicked supremacist? Um. Basically, I just feel like, uh, oh, God, this is a pretty nasty take. Not for this panel, but, so we're going to edit that out. But I, I just feel like when it came to the whole Dylan Burns and Prime situation, I think there was an element of supremacy there. I think if Prime wasn't a black person, it might not have happened in the exact same way. And I think the only reason why that situation played out the way it did was I think there are some racial elements. I think there are racial elements on Twi Twitch. And um, obviously Prime being a black streamer and like really kind of elevating black voices and then Katarana jumping from zaddy to zaddy, I, I just feel like it was almost impossible yeah. to ignore the racial elements. And so uh, Wicked Supreme was supposed to be helping Prime in that situation, or at least he claimed to be. It was a neutral party, but was like trying to make sure everything happened appropriately. And of course, nothing did. Um, but that's a whole nother conversation. That is, yeah, sorry. I don't want to get sidetracked onto that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, um, I'm, I'm going to be honest, bro. Okay, hey, let me let me wave at this nigga Destiny. Yo, yo, yo. We just, we're going to start without her. She can't hold up the whole show. It is. And now, you know what, um, Astro, now she's ha hopping to Zaddy number three, a.k.a. Vosh. Oh, uh, my fuck. Okay, for that, okay, let me get your take on that. Vosh hosting a panel, Black History Month. Black disgusting. panel, what do you think? Disgusting, disgusting, disgusting. Everything about it pisses me off. Um, I think Vosh has already like done more than enough damage to like black content creators, and the fact that he's doing it on Black History Month just doesn't make anything better. It's kind of gross. I'm not a fan. Uh, I don't think that he has our interest at heart, um, and he's working oh with... Oh my god, wait. Did my missing drama? Who doesn't have whose interest at heart? No, no, no. I'm sorry, Destiny. We weren't trying let's to go. get involved there. We were, we were just talking about Vosh. Well, let's and go. His, I'm, uh... sure, I'm sure Destiny's got some takes on that. I don't what think happened? Destiny cares. You know, just Vosh hosting his um, Black History Month, Black Panel stream thing, whatever. Um, and, you know, with Katarana, the person who tried to take Prime down, and now it just seems like she's hopping to Zaddy number three, and it just seems somewhat problematic, but, you know, this isn't the space wait, for those kind of takes. Do you think, think Katarana and Vosh are f***ing? Is that what you're nah, saying? Nah, nah, not really. What I'm saying, hopping to what? Zaddy number three, it's not about them sleeping together. It's just, you know, her looking to another white man to help elevate her platform, that's all. But hey, so listen, um, Anavar said she'd be about 10 minutes late, so what we're going to do is we're going to start the show, and then she'll join as soon as she possibly can. Um... Because it's past 10 minutes, and I don't know how much longer she was going to be. She said that f not, uh, five minutes ago. So, really quickly, as always. Um, Wait, am I just a white man elevating your panel to you? How are we? I'm feeling Destiny, a little uncomfortable here now after that comment. What do you mean De by that? Destiny, there's literally no <laughs> way we can get around the fact that you've absolutely elevated my platform. I genuinely appreciate you coming to the Fanatic show. You were like the pilot. Um, like for that show, and then obviously now we've like Jesse Lee Peterson is gonna I think beat the yeah first sure, but I just like for the record, for sure. I don't elevate your platform because you're not white. 
Okay. I elevate of your course. platform because you're not a woman. <laughs> Whoa! Hey, get well, Let's go. Hey. Let's go. Okay, just kidding. I'm sorry. That's, go ahead. We... <laughs> That's all not Wait, gonna be. Wait, we need to be misogynistic. I, I thought this was the, we could hate women here in no. safety. This is a safe space. No. No? Okay. No, it's sure. not that space at all. <laughs> okay. No uh, worries. All right, so listen. The purpose of the Fanatic Show, specifically the Fanatic Show panel, is to elevate discourse. Um, and I wish I had written something down because I hate trying to do this extemporaneously, but it's just kind of life. And I am not really good at scheduling and planning, but I'm working on it. Anyways, um, as with the previous conversations, my goal here is to bring discourse to the forefront and make sure that the ideas are expressed. So this isn't a space for gotchas or quick takes or all of the other nonsense that typically are in Twitch spaces. This is a conversation um, and I think we can easily address each other's ideas without having to attack the people. Fortunately, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, in this situation, we don't have many people on the other side of this position because I've kind of like talked to a few people to like kind of gauge where people are. But it doesn't matter because the purpose is to have conversation, not for some hot Internet debates. So we're going to move forward um, anyways. So the purpose of uh, the topic of this conversation is about Dr. K, Healthy Gamer, and um, Mr. Girl. And of course, my stream goes uh, blurry. It just does that all the time, and I don't understand why. It's this one. Let's see if we, maybe we can make it clear up. Probably not. Doesn't matter. Okay. So Dr. K started Healthy Gamer with the idea of sending powerful messages that would address endemic issues within the gaming community. He was inspired by encountering similar stories from multiple people in his private practice. Many of us can recognize the benefits of his powerful messages. Aside from his general broadcast, he sometimes engages in conversation with individuals. Those conversations, to some, resemble therapy session. Do these conversations cross ethical lines? Are they beneficial for observers? Um, and I guess we might go ahead and do individual takes on this first. Um, and I guess we can kind of start with Chud Logic. Um, how do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm no expert in medical ethics, um, but I think if you review the conversation with Rickfall, um, just as an example, it's quite clear that there is an ill-defined relationship there. It's uncertain as to whether they're patient relationship or friends or colleagues or anything. Um, so I think on, on that point alone, it's pretty clear that there's been, you know, some ethical breaches somewhere along the way. Um, I don't think that Dr. K is like necessarily directly um, solely responsible for what happened but I think certainly it's worth considering if there's some negligence that's been engaged in um, and obviously if a doctor's behaved in a negligent manner um, that's something that needs to be addressed in some way um, so that's really up to the ethics board to decide um, I'm not sure if we'll get into it on this panel but obviously his support of Ayurveda and his pushing of pseudoscience is very troubling as well Particularly considering he considering he's presenting himself as a Harvard psychiatrist and this expert, etc. But then he's trying to almost backdoor in some of this Ayurvedic woo-woo bullshit, um, which you know is not backed by any sort of meaningful, credible science. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm kind of pretty much, you know, anti Dr. K himself. I think the idea of helping mentally ill gamers um, is is good for sure, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Dr. K is doing it in the right way, um, and that's something we need to think about. And uh, yeah, that's it basically. Okay. Um, Jeff, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy without a camera today. Um, how do you feel? Okay. Let me do it. Um, yep. So, uh, after watching, uh, Mr. Girl video, I feel like, uh, as far as medical ethics, I feel like it, it almost definitely crosses a uh, medical ethical line, but I mean, that's just kind of my interpretation on it. Um, I think if I were to go a little bit past that, uh, I think um, I think I'd have to really, really think about it, even just like regular ethics, like not even like medical ethics, whether I think these conversations are even ethically uh, uh, above board. Uh, I think that these conversations can be beneficial for observers. I think that I, I question how much of it is more benefit or to a detriment. I, I think that this is, it, for all intents and purposes, it, it's beneficial but it, I, I also think it's a little exploitative, and I don't know which one of which one is uh, more significant. I, I I lean more on that it's kind of beneficial, but I think that exploitative nature of it is something that nobody really talks about. I think taking um, people's mental health issues and sort of making a show of it, even at their own behest, like because it's not like he's just dragging people off the street and it's not like they don't know what they're getting into. Um, I think taking these pretty deep emotional issues and then just putting them on display just because. Um, and that's something that, that can also be considered. Um, so, 
uh, yes, I think it's unethical medically. I think it might also be a little dubious, um, even just regular ethically. And I do think that it's possible that there's benefit for observers, but I, I think that uh, just to consider it a benefit because there's some benefit in there is, is a little too too much, in my opinion. Okay. Destiny. Um, yeah, I think there's probably some benefit to showcasing content like this on Twitch, but obviously there are ethical concerns when you're doing live therapy with people on Twitch that probably need to be addressed in a more responsible manner as well. Okay. Very concise. I appreciate it. Doobie. Uh, yeah, so I think that their, uh, the doc tickets activity on Twitch might have violated some regulations. Uh, I think that seems to be pretty clear that there's some, at least some question there. Um, but I think that if you were going to attack his platform or criticize his platform, a much easier target would, would probably be like the uh, the pretty transparent conflicts, conflicts of interest in growing his platform with good content versus like uh, being responsible about the way he interacts with people and serious need of uh, like actual clinical treatment. But uh, that being said, uh, I think that the internet, this space, uh, lots of internet spaces are so full of very mentally ill people who don't have access to this kind of stuff in their daily, daily lives. And maybe there's like a stigma around it. So even if they did have access to it, there's a stigma. So they don't want to reach out and get this help. I think he's provided he, because he's providing like um, this kind of like gateway for people to interact with this, to, to at least uh, relate to people that he brings on the stream and maybe maybe seek help themselves. I think that taking down his platform would actually uh, do far more harm uh, than, than anything he's doing on Twitch. Oh, Fnatic. I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. I, I think uh, you've muted your stream, so your stream can't hear you. So far. Okay, okay. Yes, I did, and I unmuted the other thing. Um, there we go. Yeah, I guess we'll just have to find a way of re-recording that. I don't know. We'll, we'll get to it. Um, with that being said, you guys can kind of, you know, address everything. It seems like you guys all kind of agree, right? Yeah, I don't know what our big disagreements are going to be at here. Uh, well, I thought it was about the conversation, not about arguing. But I do have a point to make anyway. Um, I think that, that um, basically people often conflate Dr. K and healthy gaming, and it's an easy mistake to make. But, like, healthy gaming could in itself do some good, you know. We all know gamers need mental health support, let's be real. Um, but Dr. K is in some ways a separate entity for that. And one example of this is he said, well, we've stepped away from the Ayurveda conversation with Healthy Gamer, but he himself is um, associated with the research board for Ayurvedic kind of medicine. So I think it's important to note that, that Healthy Gamer could potentially be something that does some good. But Dr. K, I think, you know, has got some fucked up shit going on, to put it lightly. So, um, yeah, I think it's important to separate those two things out. Hmm. Well, I don't. I don't know yeah. if you can, in not in the way that I think that uh, Mr. Girl or Huge had sometimes on his stream go after him. I think that that um, kind of tarring him in the way that a lot of people have, right, is like uh, financially benefiting from people's from someone's suicide, uh, like. Uh, acting as as like a vulture in pulling out people's like mental uh issues for everybody to see and then just leaving them there on the floor i, I think that uh, uh, casting that kind of light on him does does harm to him for sure but it also does a lot of harm to to the organization that he's built right and and to its reputation and given that this re this organization is doing a lot of good right lots of people benefit from this i, I think that that going at it this way is actually like um 
I, I would say it's more again, I, it's doing more damage. I would say it's even more unethical uh, than than what Dark Decay has been doing on on the streams. Wait, you said what, what I've ethical? done is more. You said uh, I'm more I unethical. Think, yeah, I think some of the language has been used uh, about Dr. K, right? right? That impl I think- uh, Wait, 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 sorry. What language have I used about Dr. K that you think is unethical? I think the implication um, that he's- No, the, no, no, you, not you just, implication. You, you just, you just you said, said it, actually. No, 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 no. Well, well, let, me, you, let me respond to you. you no, I, don't want, I don't care about implications. I, no, 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 listen, we've barely started yet. I don't give a shit about implications. I want to hear what I've said that you think's bad. I don't give a shit okay. what your implication is. Give me the quote. Yeah, that's fine. So you just brought up the, the Ayurveda thing, right? Correct, um, you yeah. said, oh, he's, he's part of a separate research board looking to Ayurvedic medicine, right? Yeah. And bringing, bringing that up, separate activity. And, and so far as I know, he's not prescribing any Ayurvedic medicine or offering any Ayurvedic medicine other than like meditation okay. to, to these people. Right? So bringing that up in, in connection with this conversation, in connection with Healthy Gamer, I, I, think, I think it attaches those two, right? obviously. Well, okay. And I think, he, I think that's, wait, a, that's wait, another wait. thing to do. That's a fucking stupid thing to say because he's done it himself. He on stream has spoken about how your fucking nose shape links into your dosha. He said Ayurvedic colleagues over in India have predicted COVID outcomes from people's dosha. He's made that association himself. That was before I even fucking came along. So don't sit there and tell me I'm making the association when he's fucking wait. done it himself. <laughs> Hold on, wait. Chud's got a lot of energy in here. Can we bring Chud's energy down like two notches? I was just about to. I'm sorry. Like, Chud, like, like, I get it if, if if he's like, if you feel attacked personally in this situation, but he's really more attacking the words that you... Yeah, wait, making, it's, it's making me uncomfortable, no, okay? There's a lot of energy in here. Listen, yeah, Destiny, shut the fuck up, okay? Yeah. Listen, yeah. I'm, I'm can in the I, middle of something to, here, okay? Can you can, you can speak in a second. You can do it in a second, but I just want to say, he said I was unethical. So, yeah, that is a personal attack. So fuck he, off with that shit. He, you he, may speak. He, he, listen, hold on just a second. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if it's his, his idea that it's unethical, I get it. If it's something, if, if that's... If that makes this conversation too difficult to have, then, you know, maybe we can kind of rethink the way we're going about this. But I, I, I think... Sorry. Without looking at it personally. I'm, not having, any, I'm, I'm not having any difficulty here. It seems like everyone else in the panel is having difficulty. I'm totally fine. I am okay. having a difficulty right now. All right. Well, the purpose of this is to discuss conversation, and it does seem like your energy is getting really, really, really hostile because he's calling you uh, because he said these, these words to oh, you. Oh, he's calling me unethical, and I'm getting hostile. What a shocker. Sure. So do you think that it's something that you can't emotionally handle? I can emotionally handle anything, okay? Let's okay. go, come on. Then let's, let's try to do it with some good energy and keep the conversation going forward. I've just cracked another energy drink to calm down, okay? All right, all right. you gotta do, good. buddy. All right, yeah, dude, you, you probably would, you okay. wouldn't really stand on that word on that, but that was just kind no, of- No, absolutely. Word you grabbed. Yeah. Oh, okay, no, well, there you go. I think, I think well, there you it's, go. Uh, uh, what, what's the definition of ethical? I think I think you're doing like a moral wrong, right? I, I think I think it's actually immoral to do that kind of stuff, um, because not a personal attack, when, by the way. When, he, when he's when he's when he's been on stream, right? Good people do immoral things sometimes. Okay, I, I call the the mustache you, that you have on right now on your, your avatar pretty immoral. It's disgusting. It's really drawing my attention away from beautiful Mr. Fanatic over here. Bro, you're a fucking frog with an eye ring. Wait, Please get to your point. You know, don't attack my species. The fuck. So let's move back. Can to we the have topic. a serious conversation? So I think please? that. I think that, I think that just to say attacking a species is actual unironic racism. Like sure. the racism. Oh, like fuck off, Destiny. Destiny. What is this conversation? You are brave. It's not a real conversation, conversation right Here, now. We'll pause mm -hmm. really quickly. Listen, bro. Um, if you want to talk about bigotry, Destiny, I don't think you want to go down that path. Hold on, hold on. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Please, for the love of God, this is not a Bud Sports thing. Please, 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 if you can respect the energy and the intent of this conversation. Um, so Anna, what we're, we opened up and we were talking about um, just basically the fact that like Dr. K and like Healthy Gamer, and I guess I was kind of um, associating the two. I don't think it's even really possible to fully divorce the two. And we were talking about the fact that um, we were, it, are his conversations beneficial for observers? That was one question. And then the second one yeah. is, do these conversations, the one-on-one in, in, um, -on -one conversations, well, I think right now, though, we were getting on. Lines? Please don't, yeah, Destiny. So please, for the help. Please, please, I love you. Please. Please. Well, I wanted the Doobie and uh, the other guy to resolve. No, no, they're not going to resolve that. They're not going to resolve. But that. that's an important question. God, it it is genuinely important. is not. It genuinely it's is not. Important. So Anna, can we? That's we've gotten everyone else's take. What are you talking about? I'm not trying to make content. I'm trying to make a conversation. Please. Oh, um, I the conversation was. No, no, no. That's not it. Anna, can you please? Um, can you? We, we, we've gotten everyone else's take. Can you give your rough thoughts on just two questions? Number one, do you think that the conversations that Dr. K has cross ethical lines? And then number two, are they beneficial for observers? Well, I think that they're beneficial for observers for sure. Um, though I'm not so sure for the participants how 
I mean, I think they could be beneficial, but again, um, I think it's, since they look very similar to therapy, it's, it's really difficult to say whether the participants like genuinely fully understand, like, this isn't a therapy, like, this isn't therapy, because it looks so much like therapy. And a lot of the things he does during his interviews uh, are things that, well, I mean, therapists do. <laughs> I guess, that's not very specific, sorry. Um, but uh, it really does resemble therapy a lot because he sort of like starts off with like exploring like a person's, you know, childhood sometimes. And he even will probe questions like, he will use probing questions about like people's trauma history and things like that. And this is on a public platform. And that's a really, um, it's, it's ethically problematic really because these are, well, just in general, um, anyone who's dealing with like a mental illness is uh, just a vulnerable person. And I mean, uh, to put them in front of like a huge audience and stuff um, and kind of talk about their trauma and the most vulnerable aspects of their life yeah, I mean, I think he has crossed some ethical lines. I do think so. Mm. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say that it's enough. I don't. I don't know if it's enough to really um, uh, justify taking away his license. But yeah. Okay. Um, I guess so. Wow. I, it's it's it seems like we we all kind of agree. Um, in that well, way. I think there was a huge right. disagreement earlier. Please, wasn't so there? Jesse, a huge come disagreement. on, man. Please, for the love of God, please. But there was an actual disagreement. The que Let me reframe this in a non-inflammatory way, okay? Thank you. Do we think that bringing up certain things relating to Dr. K that might be legitimate criticisms of him are damaging to the healthy gamer org as a whole? And if that is true, should that prevent us from bringing up some negative things about Dr. K? Because that was essentially the, the earlier charge that um, Chud Logic was charged with by Doobie, was that he shouldn't even bother saying these things, right? Sure, sure. Doobie, would, well, how do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's an unfair attack, right? And I think it's trying to, the, the way that uh, it's typically phrased uh, is, to me, it comes off as like you're trying to portray him as like some religious nut who's uh, pushing his religion on these very vulnerable, very mentally ill people. Um, and my understanding of this is yeah, he mentions his faith sometimes um, in these conversations, but he never he never pushes him on people. He never says, hey, go take this fucking potion, right? It's not it's not that sort of thing. So the fact okay. that he is separate from, separate, from his work, minute. separate from his work with Healthy Gamer, um, the fact that he is part of some uh, research group looking into Ayurvedic medicine and whether or not it could actually be, be beneficial, I, I don't see that as an issue either. Right? So, so people in India have been using these some of these things for like five thousand years. What's the issue with a research group forming to investigate whether there's actual medical truth to any of this shit? That seems totally fine okay. to me. In fact, that's what you'd want him to do. So, it, I think that um, there was a, a stream that he did recently um, where he responded. Okay, wait, can we get on? Can Chad respond? This is like we don't need. 12 hour answer sure, okay God. let Chad get yeah this here. is fucking crazy it's okay? unreal right. you're gonna moderate it's Destiny? fucking unreal well i'm just saying okay. he's getting steam he's getting gish galloped over here I, i'm getting I gish galloped. Destiny, it's fucking... please so hold on Chud. getting fully busted okay. right come on okay just really let's quick. have about it okay? i hear you but just just understand please for the love of god okay. if this is not, like genuinely like from my yeah. heart of hearts like okay okay like, the purpose of this is to have a conversation, and it seems like you are that, coming. That's in, fine. And it seems like you're coming in relatively yep. hot. If this is something that's that fine. can be cooled down, all, then I okay. Like then we, all I want to say is this, okay? Please, if as, I want to surf a jerk, I'll, I'll go to the fucking gay sauna. Possible. I'll head down to the gay sauna with my bros if I want a circle jerk, okay? okay. I'm not looking for a circle jerk. I'll, I'll tone it down a bit. But yes, I do feel very fucking antagonistic about this topic, especially when fucking dipshits like Doobie have heard half a thing and they're like, oh, Chud, you said this. I think you said this. It's a load of fucking shit, right? It's a very simple point. I don't give a shit about people introducing religion, meditation, whatever, okay? But the specific things that Dr. K has said in regards to Ayurveda on his channel is pushing pseudoscience. It's literally as simple as that, okay? So the idea that I'm complaining about religion being introduced is nonsense. It's quite clear in my video that I made about it what specifically I was talking about, okay? And if you are with people on your stream talking about how your nose shape is indicative of dosha, vata, pitta, kapha, wind, fire, water, whatever bullshit it is, right? Then that's just nonsense and there's nothing in it. So you can do as much fucking science as you want on it, okay? I very much doubt you're going to find some way of proving that the shape of your nose is indicative of, like, in a meaningful way, medical outcomes. 
It's complete horseshit. And that's the kind of thing I'm against. But isn't, I can't it be argued that Ayurveda is like a cultural thing, though? I don't give a shit, okay? Some cultures are better than others. Simple fact. Ooh. I'm just well, saying, like, you're, you're, ethically, though, I mean... It's true. It's true. Therapists it's true. are allowed to, like, have... Wait, can I... Let me clarify views. real quick, because no. I don't think people know 100% what... Um, I don't think people know what Chad is talking about. So sometimes Dr. K, when he starts off a conversation with somebody, he'll say, like, hey, do you mind if I frame this through, um, like, a, I don't even know if it's Buddhism or what, or whatever the Ayurveda stuff, mm -hmm. if I can frame this through this sort of, like, narration, are you comfortable with that? And then people will say yes or no, and then he'll do that based on that. And I think that's probably fine. I think we all probably think that that's fine. But the problem that Chad has is he goes a little bit farther than that, and when he's on stream, not necessarily talking to, like, a, a patient or whatever, not talking to a person, sometimes when he's on stream, stream, he will just be talking about like, oh yeah, well, you know, like we know that your Ayurveda and your dosha can do this or that, or there's research showing that like it can be predictive of like COVID-19 outcomes. And I think what Chad is saying is he's uncomfortable that he is on one hand presenting himself as kind of this objective Harvard trained psychiatrist. And then on another hand, uh, he's talking about what is essentially pseudoscience, I think is what Chad is saying. So it's not just yeah. using like the religious framings for therapy. It's the pseudoscience that he gets into on stream that bothers him. Okay. Thank you, Dave I'm, Destiny, for I'm, saying that in the most charitable way. Doobie, can you respond to that statement? Yeah, I think I think that concern would make sense, uh, would make more sense if he were presenting his, himself uh, to these patients even as like uh, a therapist or as like a psychologist or psychiatrist, right? But he presents himself as a doctor. He's called Dr. K. He is a doctor. He, right? he is a doctor. That doesn't mean Dr. that everything he's, uh, he and does he on says he's a Harvard okay. psychiatrist. So please let him finish and, and you'll be able to respond. He okay. is a doctor. That doesn't mean that every that everything he does on his his stream is like like a, is medicine, right? That doesn't mean that when he's whenever he's speaking to somebody and he gives him advice and and maybe uh, offers him some like tips that help him, uh, whether it's relating to his faith or not, that that he's doing medicine when he does those things. Wait, can I, just as a quick counterpoint, because I don't think anybody here really believes that, including you, Doobie. If I was talking to somebody that was like a doctor and I started mentioning like, man, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm just really nervous all the time. And they start talking to me about like my pulse and whether or not, you know, I have hypertension and they start suggesting like, well, maybe you should take an Advil once a day, blah, 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 blah. I'm probably going to see that advice as being like, well, this is advice from a doctor. It almost feels like he's like acting in the function of a doctor, right? Not just a random person. I think it's fair to say that most people will see Dr. K in a similar manner, no? Yeah. He's not okay, just I a think, random guy I, I giving you life advice, like. Yeah. Yeah, I think the line is the line is pretty blurry, right? Uh, for sure. Um, and, I, and that's what I said earlier. I think that he there are times where it seems like he did step over that line. Right? But it doesn't seem like that's his intention. It doesn't seem like that's the, the majority of what his stream is. It seems like to me, um, like he is a doctor, he has these tools. But that doesn't mean, uh, and and he seems to be very clear about like uh, having, uh, not crossing a certain line, which is like actual like diagnoses or uh, saying, hey, you should go take this medicine or talk to somebody and take this medicine because this might help you. Right? It seems like he's very clear about some of these lines that he just doesn't cross, right? But but in these conversations, yeah, the, I think the lines are kind of blurry, but I think that um, a lot of the blurry is from the other side. It's from people who maybe haven't interacted with uh, a therapist or psychiatrist, and they're and they're having the same kind of thought that you know, uh, if he's a medical professional, he is trained in this. So when oh, I'm wait, hold on, him, just to be clear, like, what Doctor K does from an outside perspective is basically indistinguishable from therapy. Yes. right? we all agree yeah. with that, right? Yeah, for sure. So how are we saying that, like, you know, well, that's just people getting confused, like? Well, I think right. I think. I think that's one of the problems with people not having access to, to this kind of uh, to like uh, therapy or other mental health services, right? Because they see this, which um, is not therapy, right? He's not he's not writing down uh, diagnoses. He's not taking notes and, and planning out treatment plans this for is them. Bullshit. Right? Ruby, there like, are just some. A minute, just a minute. Go there ahead. are some this, forms right. of therapy just, just that for... they don't diagnose, though. Don't forget, like post structuralist yeah. therapy yeah. and feminist therapy. They are against diagnosis, and they won't diagnose people because they believe it's some sort of like systemic like violence upon. Listen, I don't know. I I just I learned about the post structuralist counselors. Okay, they're they're an interesting bunch, but they um, don't diagnose people. So I'm just saying, just saying, like there are so some therapists that so don't maybe, diagnose. Maybe that's fair. Hold maybe on, maybe, I can, uh, okay. dude. One second, Jeff, you had something to say. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I mean, this is covered pretty much gone uh, in that same direction. But I'll say, um, basically, pretty much what Destiny said. Um, it seems like Dr. K very much has a therapist hat and a not therapist hat, and during his stream, he's constantly slapping them on back and forth. Um, so how could you call Chud Logic mentioning that he's bringing up Ayurveda in this context where he could either be wearing that therapist hat or not? How can you call that unethical? Or I'm sorry, I think you called it immoral. How could you call that immoral for him saying like, hey, you, you're wearing this hat sometimes. 
and you're mentioning this stuff that seems like suicide. So what about that seems immoral to you? Well, I think that um, it doesn't seem like his intention is to like push this Ayurveda shit onto people with the hat of like a therapist or like. Wait, a, does that matter? Why are we even talking about that? Well, does the no, intention think, matter there at all? Yeah, the outcome. The outcome is what yeah, matters. Absolutely. Do you think it does? The, out, the outcome is what oh, matters. So what's, though, what's right? the what's the negative outcome that comes from him like bringing up this Ayurveda thing and, and saying, "Hey, maybe you should meditate." Okay. Because, you know, well, no, oh wait, no, no, you're fucking. You're, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, this is why I don't want you to fucking go on and on because you've got no clue what you're talking about. I've actually watched sure, the please. stuff that I'm talking about. Okay, no, it's annoying. He's just been going on and on it and on. It doesn't matter okay? if it's annoying. Just please, just talk like everyone else is doing in the in the channel. Please read the room. Okay, okay, okay. I'll try and calm down, but it is difficult. I'm halfway through my second energy drink. Anyway, here's the situation, okay? He doesn't just present it as, oh, it's my religion, do a bit of meditation, okay? He presents it as an added benefit over other psychiatrists. There's one clip that he says, you know, I'm just like other psychiatrists, but I use Ayurveda, suggesting that he's better for doing so. He also has referenced a couple of times the scientific backing that Ayurveda allegedly has. Um, and that is exceptionally limited. I think there was like one study which was a bit, you know, we'd have to go into the details, we don't have a study off or whatever, but the point is, is there isn't like meaningful scientific evidence that backs up the idea that Ayurveda really does anything meaningful. Um, and further to that, you know, yeah, sure, there might be some tools from it that we can use in normal medicine, but then it gets assessed through the scientific method and it just becomes normal medicine. So you don't need all this Ayurvedic bullshit. Um, meditation stuff, fine, implement that or whatever. But this extra, um, you know, the angles he's going at with it is crazy. And when you consider he is on a board which investigates and researches Ayurvedic medicine, um, I, you know, I think it suggests at least somewhat that he does have an interest in it beyond just being some religion that he wants to push on people, which I've never said it, by the way. You know, clearly it's he's seeking some sort of scientific basis or proof for Ayurveda, so it justifies his use of it in some way. Sure. I want to say something really quick, Chad. Uh, someone in my chat pointed this out. Um, the sentence that I, I'm like any other psychiatrist except I use this is not an implication that it's better. Couldn't that just be a distinguishing yeah. factor? No. Come on, guys. Come on. What? what is oh, wait. Okay. Hold on. This Why is not? endless generosity to Dr. K is what annoys me, right? That's endless, like, that's a ridiculous. That generosity. implication is obviously like, oh, well, I'm just like any other ex, except I also use this. The implication being that using that is going to give you some added benefit. That's obviously no, the implication. No, it's not. Right. Because he's, no. he's leaning on his popularity Why? on Twitch. No, it's it, not. It, well, why else would you use that thing if it wasn't giving you some added benefit? Is it literally just you're a distinguishing, random... It's just distinguishing yourself as like, I also use this, if you like it. But I don't think it's implying that he's better. Who here has seen the clip? I, I have. I, have. I, I was saying the same thing. Okay, in you've got a lot of fucking opinions for a clip you haven't even seen, haven't you? Chud, man, I was responding to the very sentence that you said, as the chat did. That that's all I'm going off of. I haven't seen the clip. Would the clip provide yeah. more context than I'm missing? Of course it would. I bet the person in chat hasn't even fucking seen the clip we either. Haven't. So then can you tell us what's missing in the context aside from the sentence that you read? Well, what more context do you need? I mean, well, you can go and watch the clip by all means. But clearly what he's saying is, I'm like the other psychiatrists, but, you know, I use Ayurveda. Like, clearly it's saying, like, I'm like any other psychiatrist, but I've got this extra beneficial step that I use to improve, like, the health outcomes or whatever. Okay, well, I guess maybe like, some of clearly us, the implication. I, I think you, baked into that is... Yeah, I think baked into that is you're watching him. You think he's a good therapist. Um, so the thing that sets him apart is the Ayurveda. Because otherwise, he would just, nobody's watching him thinking, yeah, this is a pretty uh, mediocre therapist. This is a pretty, um, you know, normal therapist. They're watching him thinking, oh, this is a therapist that's really, really good. What's making him really good? And he's saying, yeah, I, um, I'm basically like all the others, except I'm using this, which seems like this is the defining factor as to why he's so skilled, which is why you're watching him. I think that's I a really uncharitable read of that. Oh, yeah, but I, I think, think also like aren't you project like it could be projecting though like it could be projecting that you're assuming though that like he's trying to imply that like it, it makes him better or something. Sure. Why, yeah. why, would you, why would you bring that up if it doesn't make you better? Why would you ever even say it? Because it just yourself. it because it distinguishes him. Yeah, but it's like kind of different. Like, distinguishing on its own is not necessarily good, right? Like, hey, I play football. Um, also, I only have one arm. Like, do you want do you want me to be on your football team? That's not like, well, hold on. I don't know if I want a one-armed football player on my team. That's kind of spooky. Um, not to be. But I don't think a lot me. of people would like the Ayurveda stuff. So I don't know. I don't think a lot of people would like it. So I guess I I kind of assume that's why he's like kind of making that point, sort of. Like, and some people do like it. 
Yeah, but I think the way that he he tries to present it, what Chud's getting at is that he tries to present it in like a very secularized, like legitimized oh. by science way, and that's the oh, issue I that see. Chud's having it. Yeah, we have yeah. to draw a distinction between the two. Yeah, like him doing the thing on stream where he's like, "Hey, I'm going to talk about this. If that makes you uncomfortable, then you know we don't have to do that. That's fine. I don't think anybody has a problem with that. It's when he talks about like on stream, like the Ayurveda can predict like some medical outcomes or whatever that things yeah. get a little bit more weird. Yeah. Okay, so maybe maybe this would. Uh, settle Chud's fires a little bit. So, Chud, what would like? So, regarding the like the Ayurveda thing, what would he need to do for you to like uh, drop that that issue that you have with um, him? So, sorry, I'm gonna. Where can I put this link, and you can watch it yourself, and then you can decide. Uh, you know, if you don't think I'm representing this accurately, I'm happy to put the link in somewhere. You can watch it. Uh, sure. I mean, sure, I, I'm, I'm not. I don't think you're lying chat. to me, right? So, I don't. I don't think you're lying to me. So, I'm, I'm sure you know it's gonna say what you said it said. But so, what would sure. he need to do to like uh, that, that would like satisfy you or your issue with it, the Ayurveda thing? Um, I think that my main issue with it is um, he is pushing this um, pseudoscience, which hasn't been proven in any way to meaningfully work, um, and he's using his credentials that he's gained from Harvard. To, to, to push it um and i think that, that that's wrong i i think that it, it's a very common strategy that you see and you see it for example and it's not the same thing obviously but with covid you have people that talk about covid um and they say they're a doctor in order to lend credence to what they say but sometimes what they're saying isn't necessarily true and could be complete bullshit in some cases so it's it's i think um an attempt that's being made to lend credence or credibility to to it so in terms of what you should do, I mean, you probably shouldn't push, um, you know, unscientific methods or whatever, talk about them on, on stream publicly um, whilst presenting himself as a doctor, um, a Harvard-trained psychiatrist. Okay, so if he'd agreed uh, not to bring up the Ayurveda thing at all anymore on stream, would that satisfy you? I know that he's already done a stream um, where he said he's taken a step back from it. Um, there are a few problems with that, though. So the content still remains up where he says all this bullshit. So what's going to happen with that? Um, and people coming to that content fresh aren't going to know that it's been retracted because it happened on a stream in like a minute clip that I don't think has gone up anywhere, to my knowledge. Maybe it has, but to my knowledge, it hasn't gone up anywhere. Um, uh, yeah, and, and whilst he says he's taken a step back from the healthy gamer stuff, that's fine. But he is still calling himself a doctor, still calling himself a psychiatrist. And it looks like in his private practice, he's still pushing um ayurveda all the references to ayurveda are still on his personal uh, sorry private website his private practice website so um yeah i think those are things that probably need to change really okay so, yeah. so chud you wouldn't have a problem if like say i don't know uh like a i don't know a therapist or psychiatrist in their office had like all kinds of christian symbolism and stuff and like i don't know like crucifix on their wall and stuff like that like would, okay would that it You're you. thinking Ayurveda oh. is just like Christianity. It's not the same thing. Okay. Can, can I? For, so here, thing. this is like this is the equivalent of what Chud Log is saying. Okay. So you guys all are acting like um, you're acting like Chud. Um, I'm sorry. You're acting like Dr. Case and like, hey, I'm Christian. I believe that Jesus came back to life and all that. And I was just wondering, can I talk to you in this therapy about like some Christian stuff, right? And that's all he's doing. If that was all he was doing, I think Chud Log would be like, yeah, that's fine. But the problem is, not only do, does he do that, he does a live stream where he's like, okay, guys, today we're going to talk about transubstantiation and how eating the bread and um, blood of Christ actually like can cure cancer. That's the part where it's like, okay, well, hold on. Now we're like reframing what was just like a, a kind of a lens to do therapy through, even like a way to share your faith. Now we're getting to like these, like these scientific claims. And you're also like, you call yourself Dr. K and you kind of wrap this all up into one big package. And now it feels like a little bit more weird. I think it's that crossing into the trying to secularize the theology and making it into like a more legitimate thing that maybe it should be treated as is what Child Logic is upset about. One of the things that's interesting is, um, I, I I guess I haven't watched that much of Dr. K's content, but I've never really seen him kind of ask for the, um, uh, like, permission to go into, like, that, well, I don't want to call it a religious context, because I think people say that Buddhism isn't a religion, or I don't know. I know he, he, he framed everything in a context, like, he used to be some kind of monk, um, and he kind of, you know, walked away from that life, and he did, you know, basically his whole path. Um, it always did put me aback because it did seem like he's doing the therapy thing and then he couches in either Buddhism or Hinduism. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Not to be too uh <laughs> too kind of um blind there, but I'm not sure exactly what it is. It seems like he couches that into his how he speaks to people as well. Um and I take pause with that. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the, I'm not the, saying he's necessarily he's, proselytizing. Oh, but um, wait, 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 I mean, yeah, wait, 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 go ahead. Yeah. Let me finish, Jeff, um, and then I got something. To say. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think that he's necessarily proselytizing, but I think the idea of just like backdooring in your religion or your personal beliefs, even though it is a good context, I know I've definitely read articles that said like. Um, it's not just all pseudoscience, like meditation and like, it is exercising mindfulness, which is a healthy activity. Um, but there seems to be other stuff that he's kind of linked to that kind of fall back on, um, like either, I can't tell if it's Hinduism or, or Buddhism because of my ignorance. So, but I feel like, so, yeah. so just to be clear. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, okay. before we do that, you did give us a link mm-hmm. and some, what I'm reading from the chat, they're saying that this does seem to kind of prove you, you guys this point. Um, I would like us all to watch it. Uh, does everyone have the link to that clip? Like, I, I shit you. Yes. So we're just going to watch the first 10 seconds, I guess? Or what What time stamp? It's just the start of the video. Okay. So give, give me about 15 seconds. You guys not, like, I'm, I'm really not trying to toot my own horn, but there are people that are in my practice that have been on treatment for, like, have been in therapy and medication for anxiety for, like, 15 years. And within six months, we're taping them off of medication and they feel fantastic. Why? Is it because I'm a brilliant clinician? No, this is what I'm saying. I'm not actually any better. It's just, I use tools that none of my colleagues use. I use Ayurveda. Perfect, okay. Listen, with that context, it's very obvious. Oh, I'm sorry, let me let everyone finish it first. Well, I don't, I'm good. Okay, I'm assuming everyone did. So with that context, it does very much look like he is absolutely trying to say that he is better because of that. I was asking if maybe there was some of that context, and I was hoping you would be able to provide that for us, Judd, as the sentence you gave us alone doesn't necessarily say that. Well, I just did. I gave you the video. Right. I just thank you, and I appreciate you for giving that, and I wish you could have just eloquent, you know. I, was, I felt like I was banging my head against a brick wall, so it was my only option left. Well, I got you. Thank you so much for that, for giving us the context that we were asking you for. Um, does anybody here now, having watched that video, disagree that it does seem like he's using Using that as some sort of way of elevating his skill or whatever, or something that does make him better. Yeah, that, I think I, that, uh, seeing that clip is considerably worse. I just thought he was kind of insinuating it. That way, he, he pretty much just sold you it. Like, <laughs> like yeah. you could cut he that for a commercial. He's about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was pretty aggressive. Yeah, um, I'd actually, yeah. I actually agree with uh, Chad much more about that now. Um, so, my understanding of this uh, prior, to, prior to seeing that, because I, I didn't know he put out like a whole video series about Ayurveda, right? Like, that's. So what you're saying now makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So Sorry. Listen, I'll just explain. One of the reasons I'm a bit hot and frustrated about all of this is I did a, a video about this that I you know, put some time into preparing. And when I speak to people, they haven't watched it, which is fine. But then, you know, they sort of question me on something, which is fine, I guess. But it's just frustrating because it's like, no, I've seen with my own eyes what's going on, you know? Um, and yeah, it's pretty fucked up when you start to look into it more. And sorry, I just want to say, apparently Mr. Girl wants in, according to someone in my chat. A few people in my chat are saying Mr. Girl wants to join. I hear it. We'll consider it. Um, I just feel like at this point, the conversation has kind of started, and I just feel weird about adding people or trying to drop people in the middle of the conversation. Um, but yeah, let's uh, continue okay. on, please. Okay. Um, well, so then here yeah. was another question that I had, um, actually. Uh, let me see. I'm sorry. I'm going to pull it up on my notes. I had it. Um okay um oh shoot uh, actually that was it i think you guys have anything else to say on that top so it seems like we all did come to the consensus that that thing was wrong right and i think maybe if we can get maybe just a, a quick closer on that before we switch to the next portion do does anyone feel it seemed like we all agreed or everyone in, in this conversation agreed that the conversation itself like as far as having these one-on-one conversations that very much mimic therapy to like pretty much everyone watching, um, that it seems like those things are inappropriate. Does anyone, does, does, then there's no one that disagrees with that statement, right? No, I think we can make a stronger statement. Cause um, sure. Please. I think we can make a stronger statement. Well, I don't know, maybe people disagree with me there. Um, I think it does two things that I, I, I feel like nobody really mentions much. Uh, well, I guess now that people are kind of now that Mr. Gill's video is coming out, I think people are mentioning a lot more. But one of the things I feel like people um, mention don't mention is um, I think it's it's harmful for the people who he has these one-on-one conversations with. I, th- I think there's not really a lot of conversations about how that harms them. I mean, it, it is mutually beneficial. They have a platform. Um, 
Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's some level of catharsis there. Um, but I feel like just taking their personal issues and just like cutting a knife through that in, in front of everybody is not necessarily great for their mental health. Um, not to say that it's necessarily going to be that there are like negative ramifications that we can see from it. And I think the way that Dr. K approaches like publicizing these things gives people a poor um, view of what uh, the mental health process is. I, I think a lot of people will end up going to that and then say like, okay, well, I need a therapist or, and then they'll just kind of go. And I feel like they're, they'll have this idea in mind that they're going to go in for an hour and cry their guts out and then they'll be a fixed person or worst case, like they feel like they're, they're interleaving their own uh, pain in watching these videos. And then they feel like that level of catharsis at the end of the stream. And then they'll be like, yeah, I guess I'm fine now. Cause yeah, I, I kind of cried it out with them too. And um, I feel like those things never really get talked about. And I feel like, He's not necessarily um, the worst person in the world, but I feel like um, everybody kind of says, like, oh, it's much more or less a good thing. But I feel like there's probably some some negatives that we can talk about as well. Sure. OK, also, to be fair to Dr. K, a lot of the things that so like a lot of the things that make a good therapist are also like just basic communication skills and basic listening skills, too, which happen outside of therapy as well. Yeah, and I think a lot of those overlap, so. And it, and it seems like he's very clear, uh, at least in the stuff that I've seen, about you know coming on and talking to him is not going to fix you, right? Uh, talk, talk to him ten times isn't going to fix you, right? So like, if he if he's being if he's being very clear about that, and he says that when he when uh, before people come on, the producer talks to this person, and um, you know they they make that very clear themselves, not therapy, you're not going to be fixed at the end of this, yada yada yada, right? Um, so if he's doing that work uh, up front and and repeatedly throughout the conversation. Like, like how much of this is like on him? Like how, what responsibility is there for the the person um, to, that who's being told this is not therapy, this is not going to gonna have help you fix all your problems. What responsibility is on them to, to accept facts? It seems well, like none. Sure. That's the problem. That's Hold the on. issue. Is that really, like, how can somebody second can topic really quick before we go there? There's one more point that I wanted to make. And I promise you that is going to be in the next topic. I promise you. Um, first off, Jeff. Uh, I think you and I had a private conversation in it. You mentioned some sort of, uh, I don't know, like maybe the Harvard statement. There was something about that statement and being Harvard trained mm. psychiatrist that that bothered you in some way. Do you feel like elaborating on that now? Oh, yeah. Um, I think it was during, there was some discussion, I think, between Mr. Girl and Dustin. I, I didn't even know this. I, just, uh, I didn't even know. It. But apparently, like, when he's been saying Harvard trained, I just assumed he got his medical degree from Harvard. No. He's going to yeah he's like apparently he's just been in a um a training program at a hospital um, that had a a partnership with harvard and it's so, just like so, mr hmm? girl's trying to contact me i think he's trying to call me um i think he really wants to get on the panel listen so, it's, it's your fine. show we'll deal with just... it. yeah i got you but we'll deal with it when it will, uh, afterwards please continue jeff um yeah so yeah i i, I find that because it just kind of feels like a the only word I can feel like it's cloud, <laughs> like cloud charging, kind of weird um, for like a like a, a professional setting. But yeah, I had a cousin who like went to a hospital and the hospital was partnered with a uh, temple. Um, but that's not where she went to undergrad. Like she wouldn't call herself a temple therapist. Uh, uh, or you know, like it feels like he's like it's like stolen valor, but for school. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe people feel differently about that. Maybe maybe with the uh, training Wait. program, it's a little different. So like, did he do like an, his inter is like interning? I think he at, did his, he did his residency there. I think at, so, he did his residency at a hospital affiliated with Harvard. I think was. Mm. So you could still he could still claim that then, right? Because he was trained by. Okay. Right. Listen, listen. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt again, but Mr. Go is very keen. I know you say we're going to deal with it. Okay. <laughs> okay, Chad. We'll show. I got you, Mr. Go. Okay. We'll replace you after this. Okay. Just go ahead and finish this topic. Replace me. One. Replace yeah. me. What the. Bro, what are you talking about? Replace me. Because I, I yeah, you just. You Bro, just, I don't give a shit about your dusty ass panel. Get fucking Mr. Girl in here. Who fucking okay. cares? All right, thank you. Or right, we'll replace you. Um, go ahead. Uh, finish your point, Jeff. Um, that was pretty much it. Um, if people disagree with that, um, I don't know. Maybe because again, I, I, this is from an outside perspective. It just feels wrong. I feel like I wouldn't use that word like that. Um, to say like, if I said I was uh. I don't know, because again, I have a whole other, um, I have a whole, uh, whole other degree of training, right? Like I, I wouldn't, if I took like some course that, you know, like EDX or whatever, or online course that Harvard or MIT has, and I took some kind of course and I got a certificate, but I, it's a little different because it's like residency, but 
it just feels like okay there's a program that's a, a, associated with a school i don't know if i'd necessarily say that i was trained by that school i feel like it, it packs a lot more <laughs> statement than i'm willing to deal with it but okay. maybe people will disagree Hmm. Does anybody disagree with that? Um, no, I think yeah, I think it. You know, if he's wearing the Harvard thing, you're, you're going to assume he's trained you know, at Harvard Medical School, and so that's that's kind of weird. Okay. <sighs> okay. Um, well, in that case, then I guess we can kind of go into topic number two. But before we do that, let's go ahead and um, we're going to bring in Mr. Grow into this conversation and the topic too. We were gonna do that immediately after the first one. That was my goal. But I mean, I feel like if the purpose of the conversation is to promote discourse and to make sure that that's like preeminent and then somebody's intentionally being particularly ornery, it seems like it's kind of distracting from the conversation. And I don't mind making my job harder, but I do mind if you're gonna constantly detract from the actual conversations taking place. And he's obviously showing a complete lack of willingness to comply with what we're basically asking is to read the room and have a basic decency. So unfortunately we had to remove him. Um, so I sent, um, I sent Mr. Girl the discord and I will send him the stream yard right now. And then let's see if we can get him in here. Uh, again, the purpose of this conversation is discourse. We're trying to have the ideas. And I get it. If he felt like that was an attack, he could easily address that with some candor and some decency. And if that's not something that he's capable of doing, then obviously this just isn't the platform for you. Again, I love blood sports, as everyone knows. I tend to engage in them quite a bit myself on other people's panels, especially when they've asked me to do so. But if someone's asking you not to, you could easily just be decent in that, certain, that scenario. Um, but I think Mr. Grohl should be joining about now. We're just waiting on um, him to join the stream yard and then let me see if he's in the Discord. <sighs> that was frustrating. That was very frustrating. Sounds like someone could benefit from some Ayurvedic meditation. Please. <laughs> <laughs> my dosha is throbbing. <laughs> Can we stop? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, too much. Um, I don't want to wait around too long. I don't know. You said he was waiting to come in. Now I guess he's taking his time a bit. Um, yeah. Sorry, just one more minute. Well, this is dead air and it's frustrating me. Mm -hmm. uh, so look, we'll just Destiny, go ahead and... How are you liking Total War? Uh, I played it for two hours. It seemed okay. I'm playing League. I'm a League God person. Damn. Yo, you're addicted. Uh, hey, yeah. Destiny, really quickly, just to bring this up, just because I want to. Uh, the very first time I ever interacted with you on stream, it was I was playing Zed mid. You were going Annie mid at the time, and I beat you. Uh, and my jungle kind of ganked you like maybe once or twice. And then, of course, I'm Zed, so I had a crazy advantage, and I started destroying you. After the game, I went into your stream, and I was like, hey, man, I'm a big fan of yours. Um, I was the Zed, and then you instantly banned me, and I was banned for like hey, a year. Good. That's yeah, you should have been. Or Zed main mid, yeah. Yeah, I was. I had the most ranked Zed games in the world. Um, yeah, that was my thing. All right, Mr. Grow's inside of the Discord, and then now let's see if he's in the stream yard. Yes, he is. Okay. So we're gonna uh, go. Hey, what's uh, up? I, I I have to take a, a stance here about Chug Logic. We're not doing that. It feels it. It feels immoral to replace him. Unfo so. Listen, unfortunately, that's the situation at hand. If that's not something that you can abide, then unfortunately, we just can't have either one of you in the conversation. It was more than just him doing that. I specifically told him, hey, wait, and we'll deal with that afterwards. He obviously yeah. shows a complete disregard for me trying to ask him to like respect the panel. I can't really be distracted by that any further. If this is uh, something that you genuinely can't a, abide, we got to move on. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a disrespectful person, but unfortunately, I have a... Uh... Steven, nice to see you. Anna, oh, nice God. to meet you. If you could unban me from your chat, that would be, I appreciate that. Uh, Probably not. Okay, fair. Um, I'm sorry about my uh, headset uh, situation. Something's wrong with my audio interface. Doobie, a pleasure as always. Um, all right, well, this is it. Me and Shudder, we're, we're like, we're like conjoined twins here. You gotta have us both. Okay. If, is, there if any, is there anything I can say? No, there's literally nothing you can say. And if you're requiring Chud to be here for you to be here, then I guess we'll just have to continue without you. I'm sorry. What if I promise to only talk? I can't. You can't 50, make any promises. 50 per, I will only talk 50 50 percent. This is as not much something I'm willing to engage normally. with. I feel like this time my time is being wasted, and it really is dead air. Can you please just go ahead and move on, or, or is that not something that you're capable of doing? I 
I really want you to reconsider this. I'm not going to. Can you move on, or is that not something you're capable of doing? I don't think it's something I'm capable of doing. Okay, then unfortunately we'll have to move without you. Thank you for trying, though. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, you're welcome. Um, it's not that I need to move on. Do, do I leave? All right. Uh, that's too much. I, I genuinely don't know why people just can't do that. Um, all right. So let's move on. Anyway, so then the next topic that we were going to get into was um, Dr. K engaged in several one-on-one -on -one conversations with Reckful. Reckful. Reckful was clearly disturbed prior to his engagement with Dr. K. Dr. K mentioned on several occasions that this wasn't therapy. Should that be enough, or do you believe the idea of therapy was flirted with and obfuscated? Um, and I guess we'll start with Jeff here. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty clear. Um, I think they, they they both were very clearly kind of flirting with the idea of therapy, but also just not therapy. I think it, that was actually a running joke. Um, like they think it's not therapy, quote unquote. Um, yeah, I think it, it was definitely flirted with. Um, and that's definitely, definitely an overstep. Okay, do we? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, I think uh, the lines are obviously blurry. I think he's definitely overstepped them a few times. Um, and I think that's that's a problem, for sure. Anna? Um, yeah, I mean, I think he definitely w did was irresponsible. Like, when he said um, that he didn't think Recful had, like, uh, borderline personality disorder, I think that, you know, speculating on a public platform about, like, someone's, like, potential diagnosis is really crossing the lines and also because it's like you know what if he did what if he did have that and then he went to a therapist you know and it, like the therapist diagnosed him with that and then he'd be like well no Dr. K said he doesn't think I have you know so like that's that's just that's not a good idea and but I I really did have a I do have a very big problem with how um Mr. Girl was trying to well, listen, I didn't watch his video, uh, to be honest. So I've, I've just picked up things that I've heard. So uh, I did have a big problem with apparently he's trying to imply that um, Dr. K was somehow responsible for what happened to Reckful. Um, I have a really big problem with that. That's, yeah. Destiny. Getting DMs from Mr. Girl and Chad Logic who are Wait, asking me to stand in solidarity. And I'm, I'm getting a lot of pressure here from all sides right now, Fnatic. I'm getting pretty nervous, so I'm going to be honest with you. I hear you. But, I not, hear the but pressure. not for me this time. Uh, I got it. Let's not go there. Sure. Destiny, genuinely, you see that what my energy was, what my intent was. It was very well explained. I understand you know exactly get a lot of, happening. they're, in, they're blowing up my DMs, pushing me, threatening me. Mr. Girl says he might make his next video on me. So now I'm not, they, Chad also says he's going to behave. Chad just explained to me he's been very off because the queen was diagnosed with COVID-19. He's really worried she's going to die because she, supposedly she's immortal. Oh, I don't know if he's I'm actually... Genuinely, I'm genuinely not interested in entertaining that conversation. Like, please, for the love of God, can we move the conversation forward? <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. That, that's, I got you. Put that out there, okay? It. Thanks for letting me know. I appreciate it. No problem. Can you give me your take on whether or not you feel like there were lines blurred between Dr. K and uh, um, therapy um, and so on and so forth? Of course, for sure. I mean, the line is blurry. Like, like everybody does therapy. Everybody gives therapy. Your friends do. Your parents do. Your random strangers can. So, I mean, obviously, if somebody is a therapist and does that, it seems like the lines are going to be blurry. Of course. Um. Okay. I think. Uh. I think that's a fair statement. So then, the next question is: Given that there was these lines drawn, and it seemed like. There was uh, sometimes where Reckful, uh, Reckful himself was like unsure, like and he asked, like, "Are you my therapist or not?" and so on and so forth. Um, and it seemed like there was a kind of a point in time where they kind of distanced themselves. Would you guys say that there was any piece of there that was abandonment? For me, I, I definitely think there. Um, I guess I, I don't know the time frame between the kind of. You know, clip where he said he's gonna stay there and love him for two years. I knew like uh, right after the news broke about uh, Reckful, you know, committing suicide. Uh, there was like uh, I don't even know. I think like four to eight minute little montage of like the interaction between Reckful and Doctor K. Uh, and whoever did that, they cut it like it was right after. Um, which of course is like a gut punch when you see it right. After. <laughs> it's a gut punch when you see it right after. I don't know what the time frame was there. 
Um, but the idea that you had something that's operating sort of like a therapy figure that says he's going to love you for two years. So it's sort of like, well, this seems like a therapist, but also seems like it's some sort of emotional support that's even deeper. Uh, and then he very clearly walks you out and then makes a very public statement. Like, I'm not your therapist. In fact, he's therapy. Uh, you can kind of tell that Red Bull, well, I guess I don't know him that well, but it definitely looked like he was uncomfortable with the whole situation. He was kind of just doing it because he was asked. Um, I believe that in that situation, just because you've operated in a capacity of somewhat a therapist, you need more than just to draw that line definitively. You need to migrate that person to actually uh, some form of healthcare. I think, I think once you've kind of made those lines blurry, I, I think that onus is actually on you to make sure that at least you do some sort of transition to a medical health professional. Like you, you need to personally find them somebody. Um, do we? Yeah, I think I think this is actually the uh, so I, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but I, I think for me, this is like the, the big issue with this. That, that Not only are the lines blurry, but there's an incentive on uh, Dr. K's side right, to build his platform, to get in touch with the biggest streamers. And then and then when he's talking to them to try to get them to pull out all their uh, dirty laundry right, as much of it as possible. Make this make as much content as possible to build as, mu as much as, as he as came for his stream. Um, and I think that, uh, like I said earlier, I think that he, it seems like he's very clear in stating, hey, these are the lines, uh, we're not going to fix you this sort of shit. But when you're talking to somebody who has like already has like mental health issues that they're that they're coming to you to talk about in a lot of these cases, right? Um, is there responsibility on them? And because that that seems like I've I've seen some people say that, oh, well, he, he made it clear. So, you know, if they saw it as therapy, that's that's on them. Right. But I don't know if that's like because we're dealing with people that are like mentally um, uh, vulnerable. I, I, I don't know if that's like a fair statement to make. And I think that this that the that the incentive structure plus that issue of these people not really being in a, in a mindset to like to, to really consent to this kind of stuff um, is the, the actual major issue, I think, with, with his platform. Yeah, I don't think an ethics board would really accept that that excuse, because even like, I mean, it's you you are like as a clinician you're well um or a therapist you are supposed to a lot of things are up to your discretion and one of the big things is of course like now i know technically none of the people are like were like his clients but i'm just saying that um you know even if your client like consents to something but like if you don't think that this would be actually a good thing for them to do or whatever like you don't do it then. Like, it's your discretion to some extent. So I don't think it would really fly being like, well, they agreed to do it. Like, no, an ethics board would not accept that. Okay, so that being said, though, um, so I think we all acknowledge that this, the Twitch space, the internet space, is very, it's full of, like, very mentally ill people a lot of the time, right? Who, who I think, benefit from seeing some of these conversations and relating to the people that are in these conversations. Right. And in the platform that he's built by doing this stuff, by going after the largest streamers and, and making all this content out of them, um, might actually be helping a lot of people. Right. So, like, I what I worry about is um, because it seems like there's a need here within this community for some kind of counseling. Right. And, and for making counseling accessible and removing the stigma from it. Uh, I worry that that uh, uh, tarring and feathering this guy might actually end up doing more harm than good. Right. And I wonder what you guys think about. That. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Uh, I don't like how Mr. Girl is doing like a like a witch hunt practically against Dr. K. I don't think that's helpful. I think that kind of we're going to go into that on the third uh, third uh, on the third portion, I think. Uh, but I guess then there's another question to be had there because it seems like it was Dr. K was very well aware of like, I guess, kind of the risks associated with this. Because I think at one step, one point early on in their communication, he had mentioned it would be really harmful to him um, that he could get sued if someone that he was having these conversations with would get, were to commit suicide. So it seemed like there was already this kind of acknowledgement on himself that he recognized that this was somewhat problematic, right? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, Ah, okay. Okay, well, I guess we're going to get into the third portion then. Right. I feel like we're... No, 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 it's totally fine. I, I think this conversation is what it is. I, I, again, I don't think it's necessarily about 
like again like debates or hot topics or any of those things like it can be a short conversation if need be but it really is just about making sure that the conversation is had and that the ideas come forward last topic and i guess this is where it gets heavy and i was really hoping mr grow could have at least complied with the panel so that we could get to this portion because i guess this is where it involves him um Mr. Girl had an interest in joining Dr. K, but was denied. Afterwards, Mr. Girl recently released a video, which has been responded to indirectly by Dr. K. In it, he very clearly pushes the narrative that Dr. K is pulp culpable to some degree for Rekfo's death. Is there validity to this, or is Mr. Girl retaliating after being spurned? We can start with Jeff there. Sure. Yeah, uh, I think there's definitely validity to that. Um, now, how much I can say he has culpability there, um, I don't really know. Um, I would say it's probably not the majority. If I had to give it a percentage, I'd probably say 30, maybe 30, 40. I think it's it's definitely non-zero, which is not good. And on top of that, um, the, you know, the, the way that they had those interactions, I could see that being painful or certainly more painful to a person who's already seems to be, um, I, think, I think he said he was already suicidal. So somebody who's already had suicidality um, to kind of make uh, mix signals like that um, and also do this in a public space, also kind of put him in a situation where he's having, um, I mean, it's mutually beneficial to, to for them, but there's definitely sort of more benefit on Mr. Uh, um, Dr. K's side uh, as far as kind of, you know, using his platform to grow and things like that. Um, I think all of that would make me say that there's, some culpability in there for sure. I don't know where exactly it would stand. I don't think that's just um, just retaliation. Okay, Doobie. Um, I mean, if we're talking about incentives, obviously Mr. Girl has an incentive to build his platform too. Um, and going after one of the the you know, Twitch's beloved like icons, right, or whatever, might be a good way for him to do that. Um, and I think with other people, I, that's something that I would like be suspicious of or suspect. With Mr. Girl, I mean, I think he's demonstrated uh, time and time again that he doesn't actually care that much about um, the ramifications to his platform, that the things he says might have, right? Uh, you know, whether it's the, the, the cuties thing or the trans thing or whatever it is. So I don't I don't know if it's fair to levy that kind of accusation at him, uh, based, based on what I know, at least. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, okay, so I don't think it's appropriate to speculate on, like, whether this is, like, him, like, being, like, pissed about, like, being rejected or whatever. I don't think that's really appropriate. Um, there's not really any point to that. Um, um, I think, like, we should just, I think we should just trust what he, he says his intentions are. Um, but then also, I think it's extremely, extremely inappropriate that he is trying to imply that, like, somehow Dr. K is culpable for what Rackville did. Um, because it's not like Dr. K was, like, bullying or abusing Rackville. It's it's nothing like that. Um, I just I just think that's very, like, so not okay at all. I have such a big problem with that, particularly. Yeah. Destiny. Um, just to be clear for, um, <clears throat> the guy that made the video now, unfortunately he's not here to tell us about the video, but, um, <laughs> I don't think the issue he had was that, um, the, uh, that Dr. K was bullying Rekful. I think the issue that he had was that there might've been a substitution of care happening there where Rekful, um, might've pursued other help or could have been directed to other help. But because Dr. K was so incentivized to maintain that connection on stream, that that conflict of interest might have led him to acting in ways that were ethically dubious. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Um, but then I also, I agree with Anna that it doesn't really make sense to like try to guess like, oh, are they doing it for cloud or that like, you might as well just deal with what their claims are instead of like trying to guess what the intentions are behind it. Unless you get like a really clearly obvious sign, like somebody is like, you know, I, I don't I don't know what it would be, but like, yeah. You, you would know all about that, wouldn't you, Steven? Absolutely. Let's not. Let's not. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so the point being, if we recognize, okay, so, so I, I guess maybe this is speculative. But I guess, um, obviously, since we all agree that there was some sort of ethical violation to some degree regarding like having these conversations with this clearly disturbed person on stream, um, do, do you think that there could have been um, some sort of seeking by Dr. K to use, not use, that sound too strong, um, was, do you think that maybe the lure of having access to Recful's audience and helping his own platform grow could have in any way shaped? 
or shaped or informed Dr. K's decision to go ahead and violate those ethics in that way. Do you guys think that could have had any sort of um, value there? I think the issue is that it's possible. And the problem with a lot of these scenarios is it's, you, it's impossible to determine, to evaluate that otherwise. That's why you tend to avoid these situations. Like, is it possible that a coworker, um, like that a boss could flirt with a coworker and the coworker could say no and the boss won't retaliate? Like, it's possible, but there's no way for the coworker or anybody outside of that scenario to know that. So we typically just say, like, holistically, like, these situations should be avoided because it's impossible from an external perspective to evaluate what's going on. Same way when there's like huge conflicts of interest that exist. Is it possible that somebody could act completely moral in a conflict of interest? Yeah, of course, it's totally possible, but there's no really way for us to know that. So you kind of just tend to avoid those situations completely. That makes sense. Well, then I guess the next thing is you guys mentioned the substitution of care. And I guess sort of the counter position to that is that like in a way, Reckful had like clearly stated that he had given up on therapy and that he, I guess he kind of wasn't interested in therapy. Do you think that that at all like kind of counters, I guess, the idea that there was some sort of substitution of care in that, in that way that would somewhat exonerate Dr. K? Well, the argument that would be made by people that aren't here to make it right now, I think would be that it's possible that because Dr. K had a closer relationship with, um, Reckful that maybe he could have recommended somebody personally or got him personally um, involved in something with some kind of like guarantee of his. Yeah, I think he could have done more to um, push Reckful to like to try and like convince Reckful or something to like see a therapist. I, I get. I think he could have done more, and that's that's another thing that I've often felt with like. Am I echoing? Is that echoing <laughs> through me? No. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, maybe it's just me. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, so I I feel like he doesn't, that's another thing I've always felt like he doesn't do, do enough of, like, like really advising people to go see their own therapist and push for, like, people to see a therapist, see a professional, that he cannot be their, like, therapist, um, especially with the Reckful case, yeah. <sighs> okay. Um... Hmm. I guess then I guess this is a this is another question I had, but I guess maybe you guys don't really feel comfortable going into that because I guess like the argument that I've heard is that Mr. K in some I mean um, Mr. Girl in some ways is using Ruckful as a prop in this way to sort of elevate his platform. Do you think that that's completely invalid? It's possible, but like there's no way to know that, right? I just think it's sure. shitty to sort of like try and bring to try and blame. Uh, Doc, like doc, or imply blame at least with Dr. K. I don't know. Yeah, I think given that he's done these these sorts of streams with many many other people, right? If this is like a widespread issue, it shouldn't be that hard to find instances where he's crossed the line with other people on the stream. Right? So um, I think maybe bringing up Rectal, um, and I don't know that whole situation. I didn't know him. I wasn't like a fan or anything like that. Um, so, but bringing this up, it, it might be inappropriate and in just that you know. This girl also doesn't really know the, the whole situation. She doesn't know the private talks that they had, or if uh, Doctor K actually did try to push him to see a therapist, and and he wasn't willing to, or whatever whatever agreements they made. Right? He has no idea. So I think I think um, I I think that that is pretty shitty. Um, it, it, again, given that he this is a, something he does on stream all the time, uh, it shouldn't be that difficult to just use something that's not so like emotionally charged. I'll, I'll definitely say uh, Mr. Girl doesn't have a smoking gun, um, but there's enough public impropriety for this to sort of just be uh, be uh, an expected outcome. Um, this is sort of why you, you don't step into these um, waters, sort of like Jethany said, like this is sort of why you draw those lines and you do not cross them because externals looking in, they really can't tell one way or the other. So on one side, it could easily be, you know, he just wanted to do something uh, extracurricular. He has a passion, or Mr. Girl, of course. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. K <laughs> has a passion for kind of like public health, and he wants to target the gamer space. So he just sees like, hey, who's a big gamer? Uh, let's see if we can do some talking, and maybe we can help people. Um, but if you also just counter another narrative, um, you know, he has a platform. He's trying to grow. He has his own, you know, custom or personal coaching team. And he wants to grow that. And there's a big streamer who seems like he's dealing with a lot. Uh, maybe he can kind of do therapy, not therapy, off the books, um, pro bono, but like beneficial to him deeply. Um, so yeah, it, it's unfortunate. 
Um, I get that people kind of shrink or away from mentioning it because of wreckful suicide, but I, I think that it's if there were ever there's not a smoking gun, but if there were ever a reason to speak up about his impropriety, I feel like somebody's suicide is certainly one of those reasons. Um, yeah. So I'm what I'm I'm curious. Um, is we're talking about a lot about what Doctor Hayes done wrong, right? Um, mm-hmm. And they might have done wrong or whatever. Um, but what about on the other side? Do you guys have any criticisms for Mr. Girl? Or I think that the guy at the YouTube is called Slush, I think it is. Do you have any criticisms for how they've approached this and how they've uh, explored the topic? I have, no I have a real... Oh, sorry. I would say real quick before anybody offers a really strong opinion on this, it feels a little bit strange. I don't have a strong opinion on this because I haven't watched this video. So it seems I would be a little bit cautious to give a really strong opinion on it if you haven't actually seen the video, just as an FYI. Yeah, I've well, I've watched uh, Dr. K's response. To, it's called uh, Eth- Ethics, I think it is. I've watched yeah. uh, the Mr. Girl video. I watched a bunch of Chud stream on this. Um, I watched uh, uh, the Slush video, um, and, and I think that that's where my criticisms come from. I feel like I feel like they, if there are like blurry lines here, sometimes they step over the line of like uh, speaking as if he's like intentionally going after these these large streamers and then dragging out their their dirty laundry. Um, to build his platform, right? as if that's his intention. To well, it does seem. That, What's the smallest so, streamer that Dr. K's talked with? I have no, I have no fucking idea. But but you but, do know a bunch of five figure streamers he's talked yes. with, right? Yeah, yeah. But so, so the reality- earlier I said, earlier I said, it's kind of shitty to try to guess somebody's um to try to guess somebody's motivations without like really clear cut stuff. I think it's probably pretty expected that Dr. K is going to be giving more attention or time to people that can seem to grow his platform. And I think there's a lot of weird ethical questions that come up right. there. Like imagine somebody said that they were doing therapy, but they like to do therapy with people that could give their particular like office a lot of publicity. Well, you'd mm-hmm. have a lot of questions about the quality of care there because it's like, well, hold on. Like, are you giving good therapy or are you just giving answers that these people really want to hear because you're trying to hold on to customers or get like good PR reviews for your office or your clinic, you know? Yeah, but there yeah. are therapists that like. There's literally therapists that will like only like will literally like move to Hollywood and just like work with like Hollywood like like actors and. True, but they like wouldn't that. probably be publicly. There, are, there are going to be people that are probably going, but they're not going to be like publicly talking about like. Oh yeah, like Kobe no. Bryant is. I'm his therapist, and we talk about stuff. And no. also, I have a print right. That would be like. There would be a lot of questions there ethically, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think there those are like serious concerns. Um, but I think that it, it so. It makes sense, though, I think, to to do that from his perspective. I think if he's trying to grow this platform, if what he's really concerned about is... Well, but hold on, real quick. This is, you say it makes sense. It doesn't at all. That's the, It's the opposite of making sense. This would be the whole reason why this this is we, we're, what we're talking... That'd be like saying it makes sense that like the CEO of Pfizer also sits as the head of the CDC and approves all of their drugs because that's what he wants to do. He wants to get their drugs approved. Like, wait, hold on. Well, there's a whole, that's a huge conflict of interest we want, right? If, if somebody is giving therapy to somebody, you probably don't want it to make sense that they can also utilize that person to... To, for a financial gain on a platform, because now we have a whole bunch of potential conflicts of interest about the type of therapy they give, right? What if it was the case, now I'm not saying that this is the case, but what if it was the case that somebody with Dr. K's level of training, that truly the correct answer that he should have given after day one with Byron was, hey, listen, you need professional help and I don't have the relationship with you to give that to you. You need professional help. What if that was the answer he would have given in a private one-on-one session, but because he had so much to gain publicly from um, from kind of like being associated with Byron, he decided not to, right? That's potentially something that could have happened. And I think it's those potential conflicts of interest that people like Mr. Girl are kind of pointing out. Right. So when I say that it makes sense, so from his perspective, if his goal, right, is actually, I think it goes to AOE healing, right, like getting as much people access to mental health and uh, services and whatnot as possible, um, it does make sense to go after the larger names because those are the people that everybody's going to talk about. And and uh, if you want to remove the stigma yeah, from something. Yeah, real quick, I'm not disagreeing with anything here, but you, do you see the conflict of interest? It seems like you're not understanding Yeah, absolutely. That, right? No, okay. no, I, I because totally agree. the quality agree with of care yeah. might be compromised because he wants to hold on to large clients. That's an issue. That's yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and there was a, cl- a clip that I saw of him. Some, he said something like, uh, oh, I mean, I'm trying to find the, the money here or something like that. I, I think that's that's a pretty sus thing to say when you're when you're about to talk to someone about their depression and suicide, suicidality. Right? Like that's I mean, that's, that's, that's fucked. 
it's it's sus to like accept like donations and bits and like subs while you're talking to someone who's like yeah. talking about their mental health. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, especially yeah. when you talk about like that kind of like mining for the golden moment. Like therapy is not generally something that happens where you go to see a therapist and then like in one session you have a huge breakthrough moment. You're like, oh God, yes, like I'm fixed. That was so good. Like I'm so happy that happens, right? But is it possible that Dr. K maybe pushes for that on stream because it looks really good or maybe because it sells the services more or the services of his agency? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's, maybe these are the exact types of conversations that he would have um, with people one-on-one, but that question always remains. You can't really know because of the conflict of interest. Right. Yeah. And and that, like I said, I think that's like the real, for me at least, that's like the real criticism, right? That, that this, well, but I think the, that's the, the main criticism that's made, right? Yeah, I think that that's his his main criticism. Uh, why can't people mercy grow? But yeah, that, that seems to be his main criticism. Um, yeah. I, uh, how would you deal with that? I got a quick mm-hmm. question. Someone said this from chat, and I think it's actually worthy of like mentioning. They said, I think at least one of these streamers ought to address the fact that streamers agree to Dr. K's conditions before streaming, and then during the show, they try to play up the therapy angle for the viewers. Um, do, do you guys think there's any validity to any of that? Do you think that there are people that would- No, okay, so correct? consent doesn't matter here, right? So Anna brought up something that was really important earlier, okay? When you have people that are coming to you for therapy, the, these generally are people that are already a little bit compromised, and the areas that you're getting into are gonna be areas where, like, somebody external, like, let's say that you get a patient who's, like, ultra-depressive or whatever, and you're like, hey, I've got an idea for a therapy, you know? I'm gonna actually send you, you're gonna have, like, a fucking 20-man orgy, okay? And I think it's gonna revitalize you. And, you know, they're like, oh, you're my therapist, I trust you okay, fine, I'll do it. And let's say somebody questions that decision down the road and you're like, well, hold on, they consented to it, right? Like it should be fine. No, obviously their ability to consent is probably a little bit inhibited and you're like the therapist, you have a relationship at that point where you maybe should even know a little bit more than your client, like how, like what would be responsible in terms of like handling that person. Just because your client quote unquote consents to something, it it doesn't mean anything in terms of whether it's ethical to go forward with that behavior or not. Yeah, I agree with that. Perfect. And I think it's hard for people to know, like, what is it going to be like to mine through, like, hardcore feelings on stream in front of, you know, like, 5,000 or 10,000 or 50,000 people. I don't know if anybody can consent to that. I don't know if anybody knows what that experience is Yeah, or is even, like. even being put on the spot and saying, hey, uh, we, we agreed to talk about these other things, but can I ask you about this, this separate thing that we mm-hmm. didn't agree to talk about? It, being asked in front of, you know, 10,000 people, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a pressure there that I, I think is, is troubling. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is, um, I know we kind of threw up in the air uh, whether he's kind of mm, he's going for these uh, golden crying moments, and I think like it's kind of left up in the air whether he is or he isn't. I feel like he almost certainly is. I think even he's he said like when he's doing real therapy, uh, these conversations don't look like this. Um, I think. Uh-huh. I, I, I think he's definitely just um, emotionally charging these conversations and being way more antagonistic than he ever would be in an actual therapy situation. But the people come in um, expecting pseudo therapy or therapy, not therapy, quote unquote. And realistically, what they're getting is just like emotional, like stab wounds bled out for the for the crowd. And there's kind of like, but you feel a little good about it at the end. I kind of um, I, I, I purged all this negative stuff. Everybody saw the negative purge. And it's, it's like it's basically daytime TV, except on the Internet. Um, and. I think I call that immoral. Um, I, I can see how people can say, all right, yeah, you know, there's some good that's had there. People are kind of, um, you know, the person who's there, they have some sort of emotional. I won't call it a breakthrough because it kind of sounds like they're they're healing. They haven't started healing yet. They've just had an emotional event and then people are being entertained. Um, I feel like he has practiced therapy. He knows the conversations to engage in and to circumvent. He does not circumvent them on stream and he does them at his own benefit. Um, that sounds more charged than I like, cause it sounds like I'm really antagonistic against like, uh, Dr. K, but I feel like that's, that's his uh, formula and nobody really kind of says like, hey, that's kind of shitty. Like, or maybe, I'm, I don't know, maybe, maybe people have a different opinion on that. Does, does that seem reasonable and does that sound okay? Um, I, I think, I think it seems reasonable. Uh, I, I think that, um, so my major concern with the way that, that a lot of people talk about this stuff is, is the, not really Dr. K himself, right? I don't, I'm not a fan of his or anything like that, but given that we're in a space like this, where it seems like there's a pretty clear need for some kind of mental health coaching, right? For, for lots of people in this space. Um, so let's say Mixer Girls Crusade succeeds and he his license is, is revoked 
and his organization organization it looks like shit uh publicly like his reputation is ruined um are all these people just left with nobody to talk to right no no well i no, think nothing so yeah, the counter issue is that like all of the great things that he can do could still be happening. He just doesn't have to do all the ethically dubious stuff as well. I think is what people would say. Mm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. He, like, do you need to give live fun. therapy on stream to like popular streamers in like the most emotionally charged way in order to do good mental health work? Like, is that does that really need to happen? I, uh, I mean, obviously not. But I think that uh, the the counter argument to something like that from you know one of these people would be like. Uh, well, no, but, you know, their favorite streamer being on, on this platform, uh, exploring these things, help uh, being given uh, advice, work through them. Uh, there's maybe some issues that, that they can relate to. Maybe they also have like similar, similar issues to the streamer that they like um, might help them work through their own issues. Right. Might it might encourage them to go and talk to someone, too, right? whether it's one of his coaches or a therapist or whatever it is. Right. So there, there is like a benefit uh, that comes from, from it happening publicly. Uh, but yeah, I think in a lot of ways, it, it comes at the expense of the person he's speaking to. Well, let's just be clear. Those coaches, yeah, no, they're dog shit. Okay. Like, I'm sorry, but like all those life coaches and like whatever they're called, like, uh, <laughs> They, they're they're not trained I, well okay i don't know well they're, I mean, maybe they're they trained to be trained. life coaches they're not supposed to be like big therapists but they're just supposed to help yeah. you like it's like executive processing stuff like ordering your life and not like fucking up shit hardcore yeah later. that's nothing like counseling nothing mm -hmm. like counseling so like there's a huge difference basically yeah and i don't really know if dr k really makes that difference like super apparent i don't i don't really i don't know so um yeah wouldn't it wouldn't we be able to say that it's like because while i do hear like the statement constantly being made this isn't therapy it seemed like almost everyone in response to like when those conversations came up it would almost like freudian like they would say it they would say like therapy and well it's like when people therapy. say like no copyright infringement intended on youtube it doesn't mean anything right or like this Absolutely. isn't financial advice like or, by the script or, or in a video game or in a video yeah. game like it's like no in a video game that's always in a video game oh, okay that's yeah, you're not right. right absolutely <laughs> so it seemed like the way that people nodded and kind of looked at the camera sometimes doing quotation marks while saying it it's almost as if all of these people did indeed feel like it was it was therapy and it seemed like in dr k's response vi video that he was talking about these are the three things that uh, that distinguish um, therapy and he was saying specifically there needs to be like a contract and an agreement um, and there yeah. needs to be all of these um, there needs to be a diagnosis and there needs to be a treatment plan and all three of those things need to happen for actual therapy but it sounded it almost feels like so in a way it's like therapy without therapy to just go ahead and say fine I just won't diagnose you I won't give we won't do a contract but then I will do literally everything else that's kind of wrapped into therapy do you guys feel like that's not an accurate assessment of kind of what's going on there and I oh, feel like that's what we all said is going on, right? Yep, that's, that's pretty much it. So, I mean, it just, okay. And then the, the other question I had was, do you guys feel that Recful is an exception? Or would you say that, like, all of his conversations all kind of fit underneath this umbrella? I don't I know that he's had the... Now. Yeah, I have. I don't know that he's had enough, like, um... Because I don't know how many times he's met with Recful. But I feel like he's met with Recful, like, a uh, That was, like, the most that he's done with anybody. I feel like maybe two or three might be the other most that I've seen him have multiple people come back on. I think the record was like, it was almost a weekly thing until it wasn't. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Doobie, you had something to say? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, I mean, I've never been on Dr. Hayes stream and spoke to him, uh, but I think Destiny, I think you have, right? Um, yeah, I think th apparently twice. I remember one time, I don't know, apparently two times. So, I mean, maybe you can give us like an inside perspective. Like what was that experience life in your I, I, it'll be the same as anybody else. It just felt like a therapy session, basically. Okay. So do you feel like um, during this therapy session, did he feel like he was probing you for, for gold or for content? Um, I don't think it's relevant to ask me in particular. I think it's pretty obvious when you look at, like, I think the more egregious examples would be related to probably Yvonne is the one that's brought up, I think, in Mr. Girl's video, right? Oh, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, so... It seems kind of hard when somebody's asking, like, do you want to name your sexual assault? Yeah. Yeah, that one took me aback. I, because, like, there's a, like, harping on emotional things to kind of get primal. Like, that was almost. 
I don't want to call it perverse because like that word's kind of charged, but like that was just like, yeah, tell us, let's know who it is. Like that is just, mm-hmm. it feels sinister. Like, um, probably not appropriate to, right. to explore that topic at all. Like right. what if it was like her father or like something like that, that just could have been like such a huge, like. Yeah, especially publicly. Yeah. Uh, it's very yeah. irresponsible, kind of, yeah. I mean, people people's traumas get used against them all the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. yeah. She might not want to explore it publicly. She might not want to make it public. She might not want to name the person publicly or want them to know that she knows. Like, like there's could be like a million things, you know, like yeah. that could potentially come up from that, you know. Could have even put her yeah, in and given, here too. Yeah, actually. So, yeah, given that, um, you know, a lot of times these are people like who are like vulnerable, um, opening up about that stuff publicly. I mean, yeah, you're, you're getting the advice from Dr. K, but you're also probably going to get like the, the hate mail and shit and the shit on Twitter, right? Yeah. About you, about things that people now know that are like soft spots for you. So that that seems uh-huh. fucked. Well, okay. I think there's, listen, I'm just going to give my kind of overall general take. I, I genuinely believe that Dr. K's content is amazing. I think there's a few benefits that actually happen from his content. One, I think there is this thing where he kind of normalizes um, the idea of therapy to other people. While therapy, like his, what he's doing on stream, it's indistinguishable from therapy from like, for like almost every lay person, anyone who hasn't had a therapist. And I think pro- probably plenty of people who have had therapists. And I think what that does is by people seeing their heroes and some of the people being, uh, you know, like, going through this it show, kind of shows like hmm this could be something cathartic for me and so on and so forth and aside from like these non-therapy therapy sessions i think his broader videos that kind of address general audiences are absolutely fantastic and i think those things are just incredibly insightful i think he's an incredibly empathic person and so i think his style of con- conversing and things like that are in- again really i think healing for the people um and i think they're really beneficial but then it seems like some of that empathy could be derived from like tools that he's learned in his private practice of therapy so i think when it comes to the rectal situation it's incredibly difficult to just say outright like you're responsible but there does seem like there could be some sort of negligence or culpabilities i think everyone um, all, all agreed I, I i was looking to find some people who would disagree there and i really couldn't find any um but again i, I th- go ahead Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> well, I was just gonna um, say, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I was just I was just gonna add with like the rectal thing is that like, uh, um, like being a mental health professional, like he knows that if rec he if like there were already therapists that thought rectal could have been like borderline or something, like he knows very well what that entails. He knows how severe the abandonment fears are at the core of borderline and like i mean borderline clients and their therapist the, that relationship is a very very that's it's, it's a difficult one yeah it's a difficult one because like there there's a lot of like trying to boundary cross with therapists and therapists have to remain like it's tough and it's tough on therapists and a lot of therapists don't even treat borderline clients because of how difficult it can be sometimes and like so I don't know, you know, especially like if he th- knew this about Rekful, I don't know. I don't know. It just it just makes it even more damning, I guess, is what is the point I'm trying to make. And especially with like the possible um, the possible like perceived abandonment that could have been like uh, projected onto Dr. K, that there's always that possibility there. Not that I'm saying Rekful had it. I'm just I'm just saying if there were e- if there were even like thoughts there that he could have it or something like suspicions there. That it does make it even extra um, egregious, egregious I, I would say. Yeah. So I think with these sort of accusations, and I guess there is a bit of a danger, because I think at this point, Mr. Girl has submitted like a, a formal complaint to like a re, uh, review board. Um, so then I guess a really simple, like short answer, would do you guys want to see Dr. K lose his platform? Uh, I don't think so. I wouldn't. I, it'd be yeah. nice to reform some of the maybe more irresponsible or ethically questionable parts, but I don't think you should lose the whole thing, no. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm throwing the baby out with the bathwater is necessarily the right move. Um, that being said, I don't know that I can necessarily disagree with Mr. Girl submitting the uh, the um, ethics, submitting him to an ethics review. I think that that's fair. Um, I don't think he should lose his license, and I definitely don't think he should necessarily disappear from Twitch. I think his behavior can certainly be readjusted. Um, he, he doesn't seem like he, he's only a, like a one trick pony. He's definitely done that other content as well that's very helpful um, that I've seen. Like his uh, non interviewing people. Um, yeah, he definitely has more good to offer. I think he, he just kind of saw a pretty easy 
uh, formula and he kind of stuck with it. And I think that that formula really probably shouldn't be done. Or maybe there's ways you can structure it that's a little bit more healthy. Mm. Um, Do we? Okay, he might be missing. I realize I muted my mic. Oh, okay. um, so, no, yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think I think that's my major concern. I, I said it repeatedly. That, uh, you know, Mr. Girls, Crusade Succeeds, and Healthy Gamers, a reputation is fucked, and we no longer have this, like, avenue for people. Uh, and it, right now, it's a pretty shit avenue, right? That, that I think that's pretty self-evident. But it's something. And I think you've got to replace it with something if you're going to pull it out. Well, I guess I'm on the exact same page because I would not like to see him lose his platform in any capacity. I actually really wished I could have gone on like that. Obviously, I don't have a probably big enough platform to do so. I'm pretty sure this panel completely ruined any chance of that ever occurring, which is okay by me. Um, but yeah, I think his content is amazing. I think, again, he's one of the most empathic people I've ever witnessed having a conversation with people. And so I think, um, yeah, there is some benefits there, but you're right. I believe that there should be some sort of reforming. I think the idea of like assigning like Reckful's death to him. I think that's really, really strict. But I do think that, yeah, there was probably some substitution of care. I think there's a specific point in the video that uh, that Mr. Grover uh, released that where he says, hey, you need to talk to someone. And then says, or so, so you have to find someone to talk to or you and I can talk, but it can no longer be one off. And I think when he started kind of defining that, it's going to need to be eight weeks and it, we can't just do one off conversations about meditation. If we really want to get into it, then we can do that. So I need you to think about that and so on and so forth. That right there, I think, is almost where you started kind of defining like a therapist's relationship. And you started talking about an eight week conversation, which sounds a lot like treatment. Um, and then you had to kind of walk it back and say, well, I don't have the license to practice in the like, state of Texas. So it seemed like you you were kind of going there at that point and so that there does seem like again a, a serious line was crossed um and I, I i think there is this idea of like trying to be innovative and recognizing that there are a lot of people that have these same issues and trying to like as he calls it aoe healing i believe in that process i believe in that concept i just think sometimes maybe individuals can be exploited in that um in that process we're going to give her outros, but before we do, I just want to thank everybody for coming to uh, the Fanatic panel. Uh, things did get a little bit heated at some point, and again, the whole purpose of these things is to have conversations. Now, conversations aren't always going to be incredibly entertaining. Sometimes the conversations are just going to be people agreeing and kind of piggybacking off, piggybacking off of one another and just exploring more and more topics. That's the type of conversation to think are the most beneficial. That's what I would like to do with my platform. Now, if you happen to see me on someone else's panel, and I tend to be yelling my head off and cutting them off and hitting the fanatic riley uh, repeat tech yeah you might see that and i mean that's me trying to be entertaining and sometimes i'm asked to do that but when there's a needed conversation then that can be had the conversation between destiny and myself i think was quite beautiful um and i think the next conversation with jesse lee peterson it did get a little heated at specific points but for the most part you know we were able to have a decent conversation um and i hope you're able to appreciate that and lastly i guess i have to show for myself in one small thing um, beyond Twitter panels, I'm also a musician. My name is Fanatic, um, F-A-N-A-T-I-Q, and I have an album coming out on the 25th, that is in two days. Um, I will link you the hyperfollow for that album, um, and then you can listen to it for free. It'll be on all platforms. Here's a hyperfollow for Spotify um, that I'm putting in my chat. And I would greatly appreciate if you listen to that, give me some feedback on there. Um, I have the greatest ear on Twitch. I've said that. It's really the greatest practical ear on Twitch. Um, but yeah, I would love for you guys to kind of check out that content. Um, and finally, let's go ahead and give our outtakes. Does anyone have any, like, want to sum like summarize, I guess, their overview from this conversation or anything that they felt like needs to be said and followed by an outro? Uh, we'll start with Jeff. Mm, no, I think this uh, conversation pretty much uh, summarized pretty, uh, pretty well. Um, I definitely, unfortunately... <laughs> Uh, I have to agree with Mr. Girl. I think that there was absolutely impropriety there between Dr. K. Um, I don't think that he necessarily should lose his license. I think that he definitely took some missteps, though. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my, that's my summation. Thank you so much, Doobie. Mm. Um, I could give you one minute. No problem. Let's go ahead and skip you for a second and go to Anna. Sorry. <laughs> um... Sorry, what am I supposed to say? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You're distracted. It's fine. So what we're doing is giving our final takes. Uh, it's okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Summarize if you can. If you choose to and right. give an outro, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, in summary, I think Dr. K, he made some mistakes and was kind of irresponsible at times, but I don't think it's, um, I, I, I wouldn't want to see him lose his platform. I also wouldn't want to see him lose his license because I, I think that he's certain, I, I think he's still a good psychiatrist. Um, I don't think that, and I do think that he has very good intentions. I think he genuinely does really want to help people, but he's overstepped kind of in tr wanting to help people basically. Um, and I think that he just, if he just cuts back on, like, doing the one-on-one -on -one interviews, because he has a lot of really great um, educational content to offer. Um, but yeah, anyway, you can find me at twitch.tv slash um, and I'm a variety streamer. Sometimes I do psychology streams and video game streams. Yeah. Thank you. That's exactly why I invited you, because of your <laughs> psychology, like, yeah, background thank in you. some ways. Um, uh, thank you so much for coming. I just met you or just reached out to you today. Uh, yeah, Doobie, or thank last you for night. inviting me. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Uh, Doobie, you, uh, you're back? Hi. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that the state admission, right, is, is extremely important. Uh, the state admission of Dr. K. Um, I don't, I've never been to therapy, right? I've I don't have any training in any of that, right? But I, my experience um, dealing with just a fuck ton of mentally ill people on Twitch, on Discord, uh, over the last like four or five years, right? Just tells me that there's an absolute fucking dire need here. There's like a crisis here with a lot of these young people, right? So um, if if he can, you know, stop doing the the line stepping, uh, maybe do some workshops to teach people how to have these conversations among their friends, among, you know, when, when someone's in crisis, I, I think, I think that's, that's extremely helpful. Uh, and I, and I hope that doesn't end. Um, I'm, I'm Doobie. I help run the politics server on discord, discord.gg slash politics, best and biggest politics server on the platform. Absolutely. And lastly, uh, destiny. Hi. Um, yeah, I basically agree with everything that's been said over and over again. I think that the Healthy Gamer platform is really good. I don't think you should lose the license, but hopefully it reforms some of his more ethically questionable stuff. Um, and I'm twitch.tv slash destiny. Lastly, I'm just going to address two things. One, I very much from the very beginning of the conversation, I DM'd uh, Chud Logic and I told him um, Destiny was tentative. Um, I told him who the guaranteed guests were. Um, I told him Mr. Girl was tentative. Um, so, uh, Destiny, yeah, there was like a tongue-in-cheek thing, because Destiny, oof, I'm not going to reveal any DMs, but basically, uh, Destiny, I felt pretty pretty sure that he was going to come on to the thing. Um, but in any case, uh, when I bring someone onto the conversation, and the goal is to have a, a decent conversation, as you saw everyone was willing to have, when I'm asking you repeatedly to stop sullying the conversation with your aggression and i get it if your feelings are hurt such that you become too emotional to manage your emotions such that you can't actually continue the conversation then i think maybe this isn't the space for you and maybe before we even got into the mr girl situation i should have removed chud logic from the conversation i was tempted to do so but i was hoping that he could be redeemed and actually after a while he did seem to kind of chill a bit but he obviously in my opinion showed a blatant a complete lack of respect for the panel by continuing to have that aggression in a space where people are trying to talk calmly and where I'm literally pleading with him and to, to make sure that discourse is preeminent and not the blood sports that is all too common on Twitch. And then after telling him, please don't continue to like sideline the conversation with Mr. Girl, who I intended to bring on in the next topic. I just didn't want him coming in in the middle of a conversation that was already taking place. After it, 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 um, So when he continued to do that, I think that was my final straw of disrespect. Now, yes, Mr. Girl was in the conversation and Mr. Girl was asked repeatedly if he wanted to be on the conversation, if he wanted to to be on the panel i extended him to be uh the, the right to be on the panel obviously if it's going to be citing his video and talking about him it's clearly something i would do but it's once you come onto the panel if you're going to immediately come on the panel and then try to tell me how i'm going to run my panel and insist on me bringing a person who in my opinion has shown in, in, in complete disrespect at that point then that's just something that i can't do i'm not willing to compromise my dignity my respect or that the dignity of the panel in order to include someone who clearly doesn't have the respect for the panel that I think is owed. My Hello. After panel, the after show. Absolutely. The real panel. Uh, if you say so. The late, late show. <laughs> I respect so, bro, that. what happened? He didn't want the content, it seems. No, I didn't. I, I feel like I, I really tried my best to, like, completely, like, explain to you that, like, the goal of that panel is not necessarily, like, blood sports or any of that. I really want the conversation to be preeminent. 
not that I'm aware of like how blood sports goes and all that stuff. I've obviously done it. I did it like over a year straight in primes thing, but I really do want conversations. And sometimes I feel like the blood sport, not sometimes, most of the time blood sports gets in the way of that. So I was hoping there could be real conversation and it seemed like but that just wasn't you... agreeable to you. Why would you invite a bunch of fucking assholes to be on the show if you want a real conversation? Uh, now you're just being rude. Fuck you. No, it's fine. I think here's you're the You're an asshole. I think if you really look at it, if you look at it, I, I think you can see that, like, while Destiny typically can be, like, a blood sporty kind of guy, and most of the most of the thing, you see him kind of subdue himself in that environment. And I guess it's maybe it's just a matter of respect or intentionality. I don't know. But in those circumstances, like, people kind of change that. And I think a lot of times, it's not like that people aren't capable of being decent in most people's cases. I think it's just that normally the environment isn't conducive of that, but they do tend to switch that. And I think, okay. yeah. Here's the problem though, right? Doobie is calling me unethical and immoral. And you don't expect me, expect me to take that. Like someone comes up and slaps around the face and I go, oh yeah, thank you for slapping me around the face. No, if someone's going to say some fucking bullshit, I'm going to get annoyed. I don't, you know, I'm sorry, but I don't care about whatever the fucking rules are. If someone comes to me with that energy and it's, you know, Doobie wasn't being aggressive in, in the way he said it, but calling someone immoral is a big slight on someone's character. And I think it's legitimate to get pissed off with that and get a bit fucking, you know, frustrated. Absolutely. And I think frustration sometimes is 100% warranted. And I feel like if you thought that was a personal attack, which I, I agree with you, it seemed like it was a personal attack. I can see why you wanted to react in a very frustrated way. But I think given the environment, you don't like because someone disrespects you in a courtroom, you don't just haul off and shoot a guy or you don't haul off and whatever. You still need to read the room. And I think if your emotions in that scenario were such that you got so frustrated that you couldn't abide by the rules of the room, that you couldn't like contain like yourself enough to maintain your decency then i think in that case then maybe this isn't the environment for you it wasn't like i was trying to like whatever side with doobie or anything like that it's just this is an environment this is what we want and if that comment was too antagonistic for you to be able to if if that convert if that statement was going to be such that it was going to force you to lose your decency in the scenario then i guess then yeah maybe this space wouldn't be for you in that scenario well, this think, is just respectability think, uh, politics then i think you have a sick fetish what's the sick fetish you're like a a, a, a nun at a catholic school who wants to spank the kids and so you put them in a situation where you know they're going to be rowdy the kids who don't get along with each other, there's too many of them. You throw like a, you, there's like six kids and you say, oh, we have four donuts, only four donuts. And you throw them out in the middle of the floor and then you just get your ruler ready and you just watch and you wait, you wait for the opportunity. Uh, that's what I think. I hear you. That one, that's absolutely not my goal. Listen, I'm just going to explain quickly, okay? Right. Look at this. Can I just show you this quickly? Welcome to Hey, Junk Nation. thanks for the sub. No, it's fine. Destiny wasn't the problem. De Destiny, Destiny said, he, I saw the clip where he said he was going to try and trigger me. Destiny was fine. He was actually like backing me up, which was appreciated because I was raging like fuck, okay? So, Welcome to Chud Nation. I Listen, okay? Thank you very much for the uh, Prime sub. Appreciate it. I did a whole ass manifesto about it, okay? Where I pointed out all the fucking crazy shit that Dr. K was up to. And then I released a video when I went over the manifesto, okay? And then when I go onto a Welcome panel... to Chud Nation. Okay. Thank you very much for the sub. And I'm like, there to talk about it. I mean, I appreciate the Ayurveda stuff wasn't necessarily the biggest topic of discussion. But I'm ready to talk about I it. I had a great time. And then I'm getting like, I'm getting challenged on shit that I know. And it's like, I know it was wrong to get angry, okay? It was fucking optic shit, right? But Jesus fucking Christ. But Jesus fucking Christ. Like, there's a whole video you can watch if you want to know what's going on. Not looking to comment further. You know, this dude is like part of a board that looks into Ayurvedic fucking medicine. Like, he's not just like, he's not just like, oh, hey, listen, listen. Oh, just do a bit of meditation. Do you know what I mean? 
So we have to assume your manifesto is truth. Pump a nickel, boys. Are you fucking Welcome brain dead? Obviously not. Look at it. Dissect it. If I've got it wrong, point out where I'm wrong. Point out where I'm wrong. What do you mean you have to accept it as truth? Obviously not. To this day, no one has pushed back on anything I've said. No one has got, gone through it and gone, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Okay? But you've got to understand, right? When I first started looking at this, Mr. Girl, listen, Mr. Girl had focused more on the ethics stuff with Wreckfall, right? But I saw like a little thread of the Ayurveda shit and I was like, this is fucking insane. How, you know, why has no one spoken about this before? And apparently people have, right? But like, I was like, this is mental. Like he's on stream saying with Ayurveda, you can predict like how badly you'll get COVID through dosha. <laughs> this is fucking mental. This is fucking mental. And no one's really talked about it. So I thought, fuck it, I'm going to talk about it. Am I, I going to have to play you some of the clips? It's mental. Anyway, go and watch my fucking video. Go and watch my video. Honestly, if you haven't seen it, suck my own dick. It's a good video, okay?